Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the Tech Guy is provided by Cashfly. C A C H E F L Y dot com. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and this is my Tech Guy podcast. This show originally aired on the Premier Networks on Saturday, September 19th, 2015. This is episode 1221. Enjoy. The Tech Guy podcast is brought to you by Gazelle. Would you like to get cash for your old iPhone? Gazelle makes it easy. The shipping is free, and the payment is fast. What's your iPhone worth? Find out at gazelle.com. And by the new Epson Workforce Printers, powered by Precision Core. Workforce is an award-winning line of all-in-one printers for your home office, small to large business, or corporate work groups. Visit epson.com to find out more. And by the Ring Video Doorbell. With the built-in HD camera and microphone, you can monitor your front door from anywhere in the world using your smartphone. It's like being home, even when you're not. Right now, get $10 off the Ring Video Doorbell when you go to ring.com slash tech guy. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk computers, the internet, the internode. I just invented a new name for it. I like it. The internode. Computers, the internodes, smartphones, smartwatches, home theater, digital photography, and all that jazz. 8888-ASK-LEO. Thank you there. Cup of coffee. I'm ready to go. Or is that a nice cup of tea? Nice cup of black tea. Mmm. No. 888-827-5536 is the phone number. Kim Schaffer is answering the phones this morning. You can also reach us uh, via Skype if you're out of the area. The area being North America. 888-827-5536. Three six toll free from anywhere in the U.S. and Canada. Uh, let's see here. What's uh, what is uh, what is the big story of the week? The new iPads are here. <laughs> it's really interesting. Apple, of course, uh, on uh, the week ago had a uh, had a big announcement uh, about the new iPhones. We're waiting. Those will come out a week from uh, today or yesterday. But uh, what I didn't realize, and I was kind of surprised, because a friend of mine. Posted a picture on Instagram of him with a new uh, iPad. There is a new iPad. <laughs> and then I'm not talking the giant iPad Pro. That's not going to be out till November. This is the uh, iPad Mini 4. So I immediately had to run to the Apple store because I need a complete set of Apple devices of all kinds. And uh, it's nice. It, basically, what they did is they took the current iPad Air, which they did not update, the iPad Air 2. And they shrunk it. <laughs> they shrunk it down into a uh, an eight inch device, and the iPad Mini was born. It really is very similar. I even got. I mean, they met, I like have twinsies here. It's a Retina display. Very nice, by the way. I think it's uh, might be might be. I don't know if Apple's doing something new, but it might be the a better display. Frankly, it really looks good. Uh, it's eight inches. Has a fingerprint reader, but more importantly, I think the biggest change from the previous iPad, uh, iPad mini uh, is it's got a faster processor some some considerably faster you know 50 percent faster processor better graphics and uh, it keep that puts it in parity with the current iPad the big big brother now, the iPad pro is gonna set the whole thing on its heels because then they're gonna <laughs> you can't keep up just face it you can't <laughs> you can't keep up it's gonna have a new processor that's faster than all of the above. Um, you know, I, I only got it because I thought, well, maybe somebody's going to say, well, should I get it? And yeah, it's nice. I've I like the minis. The minis are a good size for me. I think an eight inch tablet is actually pretty sweet. It's like a big phone. <laughs> As phones get bigger, maybe you can make the honey. I shrunk the iPad version. I like it. It's uh, it gets the job done. So if you have questions about that, certainly I can uh, talk about that. Apple's delayed a watch OS 2.0. What do you think about this? I think this is a, I think this is a brave. Apple um, announced that on Wednesday they would have iOS 9, which did come out, and watch OS 2.0, a big, a fairly big, hefty update. 
for the Apple Watch. Minutes before, maybe days, I don't know, shortly before its release, they said, oh, we found a bug. We're not going to release it. We'll let you know. And it's, as far as I know, still not out unless it came out uh, overnight. Did it come out? I think this is good. I don't have a problem with uh, with that. In fact, I, I kind of, uh, I think that that's the right thing to do, isn't it? If you can't, this I have a problem with saying the day you're going to release something because software always takes longer than you think. And when you say a date, when you say September 15th, we will have new versions of iOS and watchOS, eh, you should be able to say, oops, changed our minds. Or, hey, we really wanted to make it better before we release it. I think that's fine. And, uh, and, I'm, and I applaud Apple for doing that. And I hope they don't get any heat for doing that. I think that's the right thing to do. They did release iOS 9. Now, iOS 9 had a little bit of an advantage. It's been in public beta for some time. And so lots of people, thousands, millions, I don't know, that Apple doesn't say, but many, many people tried it and reported bugs and stuff. So that presumably put the kibosh on any major bugs. Um, we are hearing, as always, when there's a big operating system upgrade, we're hearing people complain that it didn't work or there's failures, occasional incompatibilities. You might have noticed a lot of software updates as soon as iOS 9 came out, and they continue to come out more updates regularly. Uh, but I've upgraded a number of devices uh, without incident, as they say. I'll tell you what, let me, uh, let me do it right now on my iPad Air 2. Haven't done it yet. It's not huge, uh, a little over a gigabyte. And the good news is it takes less space in installation. Apple's done some voodoo, some ju really jujitsu would be the better word, to make it uh, install in small spaces. Apple still sells these ridiculously small 16 gigabyte versions of the iPhone. And usually uh, there's almost no room for operating system upgrades. This time though, it'll, it'll work on a surprisingly large number of devices, even very full devices. Because they move stuff around, they delete stuff temporarily, bring it back after the upgrade, things like that. You shouldn't have problems, but it's always a it's you know it's always a risk when you're upgrading an operating system, whether it's Windows 10, iOS 9, WatchOS 2. You should back up before you do it. So if something goes badly, then uh, you can always bring it back. But I think it's a worthwhile upgrade. I know it's a worthwhile upgrade. Some some really nice improvements. Apple decided this time with iOS 9, with this upgrade, to fix bugs, to improve performance, to improve battery life, to really focus on polishing rough edges in iOS. And they seem to have done that quite well. I'm hearing reports already that battery life has improved somewhat. That I like the new keyboard, the fact that they have a lowercase keycaps as well as uppercase now. Just playing a little catch up with the rest of the world, the entire rest of the world in the last decade. Apple's was like a typewriter keyboard where it was always uppercase. <laughs> I read a blog post by one of Apple's staunch defenders, John Gruber of Daring Fireball, where he said, I don't like the new keyboard. I want it to always be uppercase. And I thought, that's very interesting. There is a switch. If you dig deep enough in the settings, you have to go to accessibility settings where you it won't go lowercase, uppercase. So John should be happy. He said, oh, the default should be always uppercase. I don't understand that at all. But this is not a typewriter. This is a digital device that can shift to respond to how you're using it. Uh, there's some new features with sliding over. If you have an application open, you can. this is like Windows 8. You can slide over from the right and open another application. You can do split screen. A little strange on the mini. There's very little space, but you can do it. And there's some cases where you might want to. You know, you have your contact list open uh, while you're trying to enter in a phone number or something. That makes, that makes a lot of sense. On a bigger iPad, like the new iPad Pro, which will be out, as I said, in November, that will be really nice. That will make it much more useful. But uh, if you're wondering, should I update to iOS 9, the general rule of thumb is wait a while. You could even wait a week. See what howls of pain there are. Check the... Mac blogs, you know, 9 to 5 Mac and Mac rumors and Mac world and see if anybody says anything, you know, what kind of problems people are having. Then you can decide. I, but you know how Apple people are. <laughs> uh, day one, apparently 12% of the iOS 
users had already upgraded to iOS 9. By now, it's probably half. Amazing. As I sit here upgrading all of my iDevices. Amazing. 8888 ask Leo, picture in picture. That's kind of cool. We have a little picture. I haven't, you know, there's so many new features. Even though they said this is just polishing, there's so many new features. I still haven't seen a lot of them. I've got to play with them. A number of people, my friend uh, Renee Ritchie at iMore.com has made a 20,000 word article about all the new features. David Pogue at Yahoo, tech.yahoo.com has done the same. So there are a few articles you could work through if you want to see them all. Anyway, that's enough of that. Let's talk. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. <laughs> 8888-ASK-LEO-888-827-5536. That's the phone number. Our website, techguylabs.com. Love to hear from you if you want to ask a question, make a comment, make a suggestion. You can also do that at the website. There's no sign-up, no charge. Just uh, just go to techguylabs.com. And what happens as we do the show, James DeRuvo, who's writing right now, will we'll put kind of a sketch, an outline of what we talk about and the links and stuff in there. Uh, then we go in, we post the audio from the show and the video from show, the show after the show's over. And then Josh Windish goes in there, adds more material. You go in, I hope, and comment if you've got a, you know, if you say, oh, Leo, I got a better idea. There's a better way or whatever. You can always do that. Techguylabs.com. I hope that it will become a valuable resource, for, not just for you, but for everybody. Techguylabs.com. Uh, hello, Kim Schaffer. Good morning. She's the phone ranger today. How are you? I'm did you have great. a good week? I, I did. It was a long week, but I'm, I'm glad the weekend's here. Somebody tweeted me and said, no more free plugs on the Tech Guy show. I don't want to hear any more made-up <laughs> questions with free plugs. All right, consider yeah. that a, an order from the Twitterverse. You never know what the callers are going to well, do that's the problem. get on the air. That's the problem. They say, I have a question. They ask, and then they get on and say, oh, and by the way, right. would you like some cookies? <laughs> 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 Who should I talk to first? Uh, how about Mike in Canyon Lake? It is tis the season for new phones. So, yes, it is. Uh, Holy cow, is it the season? He's got some questions, and it's not about the iPhone. So I buy... Every phone I can get lay my hands on so that I can answer these questions. Awesome. So here's the payoff right now, the payoff pitch. Hi, Mike. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hey, Leo. Yeah, quick question here. I, I recently got my invite for the OnePlus 2. Uh, the day before, I went and bought the Moto X Pure. Oh, man. Actually, You're kind of starting yeah. to sound like me. <laughs> I have my iPhone 6 Plus that I'm calling you from, but uh, I had actually returned the Moto X Pure because the whites were really warm, and uh, it was more of like a tan, so I got a replacement. And, yeah, that doesn't um, sound right, because uh, I, I have it too, and it, the screen I think is quite nice. It's an LCD screen. Well, the, the uh, it was the Moto X Pure that I returned. Yeah. So I'm kind of contemplating now, do I, in your opinion, is it, is the OnePlus 2 a better phone, the Moto X Pure? Uh, Both of I them kind of leave stuff. me a little cold for a couple of reasons. Okay. Um, the Moto X Pure, I love Moto X. I really do. The, the very first one was my phone of the year 2013. Uh, I love how it listens to you. You can talk to it. Uh, although more, more, more and more phones are doing that now, including iPhones, uh, the new iPhones. Uh, it knows what you're doing, so when you're driving, you can set it so it'll read you text messages. Uh, when you're asleep, it doesn't bother you. When you're in a meeting, all of those things are very handy. You can add them with third-party software, but the fact that it's built into the phone really, to me, really works nicely. And the Motorola is a is a very a fairly a clean version of Android, which I also think is a selling point. Yep. But I'm more and more of the opinion that uh, your new phone should have a a fingerprint reader. I think for security and convenience, it just can't be beat. And now I'm a little spoiled, and it doesn't. So that's one issue I have with it. The other, it's got a great camera, 21 megapixel camera. It does very well in bright sunlight, but doesn't do well in low light because it is missing another feature that I think is fairly important in cameras these days. You have it on your 6 Plus. It's called optical image stabilization. Yep. And I think that makes a big difference, especially when the light is low, because it's it, it, it reduces hand shake, and in low light that's very important. 
Um, so I feel like the most, and then the third, and maybe the, the deal breaker for me was battery life. I I really want a phone that'll go all day. Your 6 Plus does. Yeah, it does. You get you get home at night, late at, even if it's a late night, you still got, you know, 20, 30% left. Moto X doesn't do that. Uh, frankly, neither does the OnePlus 2. The, the OnePlus 2 has an excellent fingerprint reader, also a very good camera. Can't remember if it has OIS or not. I don't think it does. But where it's falling down is the screen. It's a very washed out looking screen. And if you're sensitive to the point where you think those are too warm, those whites, you may not like the OnePlus 2 screen. I wish there was some way you could see it before you buy it. Uh, in my opinion, yeah. the, the colors were washed out. All right, so I really like the pure Android experience on both of them. That's why yep. I like the Android phone. But the one, the one plus two is is oxy, they're, they're Oxygen OS, and it's absolutely pure. Here's something in their favor: they've already patched for the stage fright exploit. Moto X has not. Hmm. Everybody, okay. pretty much, even uh, Samsung's Note Five is patched for stage fright, uh, fully patched. The Mo Moto X still has one vulnerability, which I find surprising, but I'm sure they'll push something out. Now, here's the thing you might want to wait for. September 29th, 10 days from now, Google announces, if you want pure Android, it's new Nexus phones. Uh, yeah, I've seen both of those, uh, the Huawei and then the uh, LG. Yeah. And those are speculation. Are Google's not said anything, so you understand that's that's the rumor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, definitely. Okay, I'm still stuck. <laughs> Maybe I wait. Maybe I, I, uh, I'm just going crazy with battery life. I'm really, and I think I may end up with the iPhone 6S Plus as my daily as they say, daily driver, the phone I use all the time. Because yeah, the it, Moto X has a quick charge, so that's kind of nice. Yeah, all of them have now the ability to charge up. The Moto X is the fastest. It's it's from zero to one, zero to one hundred percent in in about an hour. Yeah. So if you're yeah, I mean that's and for most people that's a normal scenario. And in fact, even for me, you know, I'm I'm at my office, I can charge. Uh, I sit down to dinner, I'll charge. But the the issue for me is the days I travel, the days I'm in a plane. Or I'm 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 in a foreign city and I'm traveling around a lot and I can't get to a charger, and I want it to last all day. I mean, you can carry a battery with you. You know, people do that. Yeah. I feel yeah, I feel nice like that's a, I, I'm hearing that more. Yeah, well, that's one nice thing about the old note. You can't do that with a new note. That's I'm hearing that more and more people making excuses for poor battery life. Well, you just bring an extra battery with you. I don't find that a very good response. And I have yet to see the only phone that had great battery life. In my whole experience was the One Plus One, which was easily twenty hours. Got through the day, no problem. Uh, I don't know why the One Plus Two does not duplicate that battery life. Maybe that, maybe I don't know what they did differently, but uh, yeah, they didn't have NFC in it, and you, you think yeah, you missing NFC. That's another one. Don't you want to? I mean, if you have a fingerprint reader, why don't you have NFC? They go together. That's that's for tap to pay. Yeah, that's what I liked about the Moto X, and then you also have expandable storage. Which that's can, nice, uh, and I did use that. I put a 128 gig SD card in there. Uh, that's very nice. Can't do that with the One Plus Two. Um, yeah. Well, maybe I upgrade my. There. You know what? You know what? Success Plus. I don't know. If you're listening, what you're hearing is there's no perfect phone. They yeah. all fall down in one area or the other. There's some great features on the Moto X. Love it. Love the uh, SD card. Everybody seems to have stopped doing that. Uh, in fact, I doubt very much uh, Nexus will, the new Nexus is, Nexi will, because uh, a a Google doesn't seem to like SD cards. They will have the new Marshmallow, and supposedly <laughs> Android 6 has be much better battery life, just as iOS 9 supposedly has much better battery life. I mean, I, people understand, I think companies understand this is an issue, but they what they do is they put smaller batteries in or they put m bigger screens on it. It just doesn't seem to make it. So I don't know what I'm recommending at this point. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. JC Techie says in the chat room, well, oh, it's no problem. You want better battery life? Just turned off, uh, you know, you turn off stuff. No. <laughs> no, I want, <laughs> if you sell a phone with features, I want to use all the features and I want it to last. Hey, Scott Wilkinson is here. He is our uh, home theater geek. He joins us each and every week to talk about surround sound, big screens, all that stuff. You'll find him as uh, editor of the AVS Forum and also on his podcast, the Home Theater Geek Podcast, which is twit.tv slash HTG. Hello, Scott. Hello, Leo. How you doing? I, uh, I didn't get a chance to say uh, Shana Tova to you. 
Ah, Shana Tova to you. Okay. Yes, we're in the middle of the Jewish high holidays. Uh, the end is coming up uh, this Wednesday, and I got a big program to put on uh, Tuesday night. So you play the very... do you play the shofar for Shana Tova yes, for uh, Rosh Hashanah I do. as well? Yep, yeah, I sure Scott, do. Scott says I can play anything with wind. <laughs> <laughs> and you're correct. <laughs> and uh, the apparently the ram's horn uh, is a wind instrument. It, well, we don't really call it a musical instrument because it, it doesn't actually. It, I use it to play music, but I'm sacri sacrilegious. You can't. Uh, it's really you're just supposed to call, make a call to you're the faithful. You're supposed to, yeah, make a, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. You got it. You could do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I couldn't. So, what's up? Hey, I first want to direct your attention to avsforum.com, where we have a brand new homepage and uh, entire section where we've basically brought all the editorial content, that is everything I write, everything my colleague Mark Henninger writes, uh, and our Blu-ray movie reviews by Ralph Potts mostly, uh, and, and organized them into a new, brand new um, section of AVS Forum. So uh, I encourage everyone to go check it out because I'm really quite proud of it. This is nice. And by the way, Scott's uh, podcast is also uh, highlighted there. This really yep. looks good. So you're really focusing on the gear. Well, yeah. I mean, a lot of people want to know about gear. They want reviews. They want uh, how-tos and mm. and uh, stuff like that. Ooh, so, so yeah, want, we're really... I want those Bowers and Wilkins 800 series. Oh, man. Oh, man. Those are nice. Ooh. Yes. And indeed. it's nice because you have a Blu-ray reviewer. And I know your last show actually was with the uh, Blu-ray reviewer from AVS. Correct. Right? So Correct, it's a good yeah. place to go, too, if you want to see which discs are worth getting. Exactly. And Ralph Potts, the Blu-ray reviewer, maintains a list of his favorite Blu-rays, not necessarily in terms of the quality of the movie or the TV show, because he reviews TV shows as well, but rather the quality of the audio and video. That's what cracks uh, me up about audio files <laughs> and video <laughs> files. They spend tons of money getting yep. a perfect system. And then they buy CDs or records and or movies, not based on oh I oh the 1812 overture, what a brilliant piece of music. No, because it's got cannons and bells, and it right, can test right. your speakers. Or this exactly. Blu-ray, man, it was a terrible movie, but boy, does it look good. <laughs> You'd be surprised how many people say exactly that. And it's often the case, isn't it, that the that movies, for some reason, uh, more attention's Pay to the, I guess because they're blockbusters, right? Yeah, it's certainly the tent, what are called the tent pole movies, right. the big, the big blockbusters. They pay more attention to the quality of them, and even if they're not very good, uh, very often they they look really great, um, and, and or sound really great. So, so. that's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is what some. is what is his number one Blu-ray? Like if I were going to buy one Blu-ray just to see how good my system could look. Well, that de that depends upon whether you're talking about the video, the audio, or maybe the Atmos soundtrack. I don't have um, Atmos. Well, you don't have Atmos, so okay. Um, I'd have to, I you know, to tell you the truth, I haven't gone and looked at that list. You lately, know what he but, has though, which is great, is a list of HDR movies. They're going to be, there are already. Uh, oh, this is in the theater. This is in the theater. Uh, I wrote that piece about about there are new uh, high dynamic range movies coming out in the theater. Five new ones were announced uh, about a week ago, and I'm really looking forward to them, especially yeah. The Martian. Yeah, the only one that's going to be any good. <laughs> the Martian. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, The Maze Runner, The Scorch Trials. No. And it's, you you know, survived no. The Maze now. Let's now. see if you can survive The Scorch. <laughs> And then, of course, next year, you survived the scorch, but right. how are you with the Legion of Doom? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you did well with that Legion of Doom, but maybe yeah. the underground Hades trials will work. Yeah. I mean, yeah, come on. Yeah. Scorched. I know, I know. It's, the what, Martian is going to be great. Martians, everybody should go see The Martian because it was and, a and in brilliant fact, book. I, I've, heard, I've heard it's a brilliant book. I read the yeah. book, it was fantastic. And I actually heard some reviews from the Toronto Film Festival where they played it. And uh, the, the reviewers all went, wow, this is great. They, they were faithful to the book, which is, to me, really important. Yeah. When you have a great book that everybody's read, Ender's Game was another example. It's a challenge because uh, a book, if you were to film every word, would be 11, would be, 20 yeah. hours. Yeah, You only yeah. get two. 
<laughs> so nothing in in by definition, no no two hour movie can be faithful to the book. Can be completely faithful to the book. This but was a short you book. Can be, so. <laughs> yeah, but you can be faithful to the spirit of the book. Right. And they say that Matt Damon is a you know does a great job as the wisecracking astronaut. Uh, He'll be uh, great. Mark Watney. He'll, yeah, be great. he'll be great. And the whole movie will be great. And it's being mastered and shown in high dynamic range, which we've talked about before, which means deeper blacks, brighter, nice. brighter brights, uh, and, and really makes the movie pop off the screen. Our chat room uh, says your uh, 3D or your uh, Blu-ray reviewer said Mad Max Fury Road. Fury Road. Yep. Was his, yep. Uh, his That's pick. right. That's right. Yeah. That's his latest favorite, I think. Yeah. yeah. That but actually no. was a good movie, so... I didn't see it, actually, yeah. but I'll look at it on Blu-ray for sure. Yeah. You know, he reviews three or four movies a week. And <laughs> I asked and him I how And I imagine it's he... not just watching it beginning to end like I would. Yeah. Reviewing it means, you know, you got to look at it with a scope and you got to listen yeah. to the sound with your eyes That's closed right. and all sorts of stuff. And you got to go through all the bonus features. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> man. That could take more than a week. That can take hours. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Well, I'm glad he's reviewing those as well. That's nice. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, when so, is uh, when I'm uh, when am I going to get my new TV, my UHD TV with HDR and uh, all of that? Mm, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on there too. Um, Samsung, of course, has TVs that are currently HDR capable. Uh, Sony just announced that they're going to do a firmware update to a fairly wide range of 2015 TVs. We knew about one or two, but they announced another three or four that are going to get this upgrade. Uh, so, so there's that. We know that Vizio is about to come out with the reference series, uh, which will have Dolby Vision high dynamic range. Um, and this brings up kind of a big question mark that I'm still trying to get the answer to, which is if one TV has one type of HDR and another TV oh. has a different type of HDR. Oh. oh, man, are we in for another format war? Oh. I hope not. There's different kinds. I'm afraid so. Oh, I'm afraid so. And I get I get uh, emails about it, too. Uh, what, you know, what's going on with this format war? Well, I don't know yet. I'm still researching what's going to happen if a, if one type of TV gets a different type of signal. Is it going to ignore it? Is it going to be able to deal with it? What's going to happen? We just don't know yet. And that's why I recommend, you know, be a little patient. If you need a TV right away, then, OK, maybe you need to buy one. But if you can wait, do. Till next okay. year. I'm waiting. Next year it'll be it'll be sad. I'm, I'm happily, gladly <laughs> keeping my wallet in my pocket this year. Yes. Of course, yes. next year is only a few months away. Well, you mean next I know. fall? Yeah. Well, yeah, now? you're right. Yeah. 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 All right. I'd say that's probably uh, accurate. We also have Ultra HD Blu-ray coming up. Of course we do. <laughs> <laughs> that's coming soon that's coming this year that's, but, but yeah, i don't have yeah. a tv i can year. watch it on yeah, apple got no. a lot of heat for not putting 4k in their uh new Seriously. apple tv and then Seriously. amazon turns around the next week and says oh we got it they put it in theirs amazon yep. fire yep scott wilkinson yep. you'll find him at the uh home theater geeks podcast twit.tv slash htg but you know what it's all at the brand new and really looking good avsforum.com thank you scotty you betcha Oh, one thing I hate about iOS 9, I now have to log in again and say, I have to it takes so long when you do an iOS update. Well, I'll do that while Scott regales you with <laughs> tales. Regales you with tales. Tales from yes. the theater. <laughs> <clears throat> So, yeah, Beatmaster has a good idea. Uh, maybe I could get somebody on from Criterion to talk about their um, Criterion collection of, uh, of Blu-rays. I think that's a great idea. Um, let's see. Lumpy has a question. My Blu-ray is connected to TV via HDMI and then TV to 5.1 soundbar via optical cable. Am I getting true uh, 5.1 surround sound output? <laughs> the answer is probably not. It depends on the TV. So, uh, Lumpy, if you could tell me what TV you have, I, I could do some research. I might not know right off the top of my head. But this is one of the dirty little secrets of home theater. And you, what you have done is what a lot of people do. They take HDMI from their Blu-ray player. They send it to the TV. 
Then they take the optical audio output from the TV and send it to their sound bar or their AV receiver or something like that. And they, they expect that 5.1 coming into the TV should be coming out of the TV's optical cable uh, and onto the sound bar. But it's often not true. Very often, uh, perhaps in the majority of cases, uh, the TV will take a 5.1 in from the HDMI uh, input and down mix it to two channels for the optical out. Why do they do that? I have no idea. I wish I did. Um, but it's, it's really weird. Now, if you have an AV receiver, I wouldn't recommend doing this anyway, because unless it's a really old one. It doesn't have HDMI. But if it does have HDMI, take your Blu-ray player's HDMI out, connect it to the receiver, and then HDMI out from the receiver to the TV. That way, you know you're going to get 5.1 or 7.1 or Atmos or whatever uh, and in the sound system, and then your TV is going to get the HDMI video signal. But if you do it this other way, where you connect first to the TV and then out by optical to a soundbar, say, very likely you will not get 5.1. You'll only get two-channel. Now, it depends. Some TVs, a few TVs do it. And I, I must admit, I haven't done my research on this, and it's actually a good idea for an article to, uh, to do a survey of TVs and see which ones do two-channel out. Tell you the truth, that would be a difficult research. That would be difficult research to do because a lot of the TV manufacturers, I bet, do not want to reveal it. So there is a problem. Um, <clears throat> so let's see. Uh, Lumpy, oh, should I use the left and right audio cable from the Blu ray to sound? Uh, well, then you'll only get two channels again. Uh, so that is not uh, something that you should do. TV is a new 70-inch e E-Series from Vizio. A nice TV, no doubt about that. Um, Emily the Strange, nice screen name. Uh, the cables, uh, My cable set box is stuck at 1080i. Broadcast TV looks horrible. Is this a problem with my TV or the cable box? It's very blurry and blotchy. Ooh, well, that's not good. Uh, I would say, I don't... Hmm. Most television stations are 1080i. Um, oh, and here comes... The, oh, thank you, Leo, for putting that up. I've only got 25 seconds left. Yeah, I think ESPN uh, is 720p, at least last time it I is. heard so that is talking. Yeah. So is Fox. So is Fox. They there decided that would be better for action, for sports, right? Correct, yeah. and it is. Yeah. That's actually correct. Yeah. Uh, but, but that's uh, on your cable. Having, that's not... That's yeah, not, that's the cable yeah. box. That's not the TV. Right. Having the TV blurry and blotchy, there's something wrong there. I gotta run. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, 8888. Ask Leo if you want to talk high tech. I'd love to hear from you. 888-827-5536. Well, let's talk a little bit about ad blockalypse. That's the probably, uh, from the point of view of uh, the Internet, that might be the single most, and it's a minor feature, but the single most important feature of iOS 9. Apple decided to allow people to install ad blockers. Not system-wide, very importantly, because Apple, in fact, puts ads, as do others, in their apps. They can't block those. But just on Safari, the browser. And in order to make that work, you have to download one of uh, several uh, content blocker apps. I use Crystal, but uh, pick one of those. And then you'll see in the settings you can enable it in the Safari settings. And it will block advertising from websites. Very controversial. And I frankly see both sides. On the one hand, uh, ads have gotten egregious. They've really gotten to be where you can barely read the content, especially on mobile. They just take up the whole screen or, you know, they spend, they use a lot of bandwidth. There's a security implication as well. Many of these uh, ad units use Flash and other technologies that allow malware into your system. Not a problem on the iPad, but uh, certainly a problem on the desktop. And more and more people are using ad blockers on the desktop to prevent all of that, to speed up their page loads, to uh, eliminate the potential for uh, malware infections, um, and to not see ads. Also has a privacy impact because in many cases, these ad blockers, most of the ones on iOS as well, block uh, tracking so that an advertiser can't uh, notice that you've seen that same ad on various sites.
then by doing so, by deduction, figure out what sites you visit. Uh, it's very controversial because it's eliminating a source of revenue for most websites. In most cases, the source of revenue. So when you go to a website, when you read a website and you see all those ads, that's what's paying for that website. If you don't see those ads, they don't make any money. Some say that's like walking into the Apple store and saying, I'll take this iPad. Thank you very much. Others say, and I, you know, I've, I'm very sympathetic to the argument that, but these, but these ads are, are really out of control. There are sites where you just, the site is three times larger and takes many, many more seconds to load, like 30, 40 seconds to load. And, uh, and why should we have to put up with that? I, do, I don't know what the answer is. As, as somebody who's made his living my whole life on advertising, I've never worked on a paid medium. I've always worked on mediums that are free because they're ad-supported, like this show. So on the one hand, I really think blocking ads, and I really understand a website that says, oh, blocking ads, you're going to put us out of business. But I also understand you know, why it's gotten to this point. The ads have gotten very annoying. There's a precedent for this. It's happened before. Remember when pop-ups and pop-unders were the bane of the web? You'd go to a website and all these windows would open up. Or uh, worse, after people start getting annoyed about that, open under the browser. When you close the browser, there'd the ad be. And in that case, the browser community responded. They put pop-up blockers. There's not a browser out there that doesn't have a pop-up blocker in it. And at that point, nobody complained. Nobody said, oh, but that's how we make our living. They said, yeah, you're right. These things are annoying. <laughs> and uh, they found another way to do it. The problem is, of course, that uh, people don't really see banner ads. Do you see banner ads on a website? No. We've trained ourselves to kind of look, <laughs> almost to look away. Look away! To read the content and ignore the banner ad. And so they've had to get more aggressive, making those ads jump and dance, take over the page, Force you to look at the ad before you can look at the content. Lots of response, lots of things like that uh, to make them effective. And advertisers track for a variety of reasons. I mean, I think people. The, I, I wish we hadn't chosen the word tracking because that sounds like somebody's like stalking you. But in fact, in most cases, what tracking means is the advertisers trying to keep track of how many times you've seen that ad, so they don't show it again. Isn't that annoying? You don't want to see an ad again and again and again. Well, the only way they know is if they keep an eye on how many times you've seen it. They're also interested in uh, stuff you're interested in. So they may say, hey, you know, this guy goes to a lot of sporting goods websites. Let's put some more sporting goods ads in his stream. And I think, I think I, you know, that's what you want. You want ads that are relevant to your interests. Um, then they also, and this is what bothers people, may start to put together a dossier on you. Uh, they may start to gather information about you. And if on one of the sites you enter information about yourself in, that information could then be fed to the advertisers by the site, and that dossier gets bigger and bigger. I guess my feeling is that dossier is, is really not designed to, you know, throw you in jail. <laughs> this isn't the government. These, these are advertisers. These are marketers. That dossier is to try to get you to buy products by giving you more germane ads, by putting ads in, you know, that you're more likely to click it on. And I, th I don't think that by itself is, a, is you know, that, that, let's call that um, uh, ad customization, not tracking. Is it, is that, how's that feel? And people say, I don't want it. I ain't going to have it. And I think, truthfully, the real th problem is people don't like ads. They just don't like ads. Really, let's face it. <laughs> that's the real. That's the bottom line. And uh, ad blockers eliminate them. So it's very tempting. And yet, one of the uh, one of the guys putting out uh, an ad blocker, Marco Arment, he made one called Peace because he wanted just peace and quiet. But Marco has a website with ads on it, and many of his friends and colleagues, like John Gruber of Daring Fireball, use the same kind of content system on their website. These are not obtrusive ads. They're very subtle. They're not annoying. But Peace blocks them. <laughs> and, uh, and Marco realized, you know, I can't in good conscience sell an ad blocker because many of my friends rely on these ads for their to make a living. And ad blockers block them. They'll put them out of business. So he pulled it after three days. Lots of controversy over that. 
I, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to defer on this one because I understand both sides very well. I'm, I'm on both sides, as I think most people are who are working on the web. Most people who have blogs that are supported by ads also understand that these ads are extremely annoying. It may be this is just an evolutionary thing, that it may be that this is going to force advertisers to find less annoying ways to connect with you. I, that's my hope. I think along the way, though, we're going to see sites disappear, and I, that, that makes me sad. 8888-ASK-LEO. Uh, what do you think? I'd love to hear your opinion on this. I think there's, there's both, both points of view have merit. I, do, I just don't know what the answer is. I think the answer would be for, the, for advertisers to come up with a better way. Uh, for instance, uh, the kinds of ads we do, we, because we're a tech po uh, uh, radio show, we know that you like tech stuff. And we try to do the ads for products that you'd be interested in. We don't have to track you to do that. T. Harris is next in San Diego. Hi, T. Harris. Hi, Leo. How are you today? I am unfortunately going to have to break for news, but can you just give me oh. the... Uh, you, uh, okay, the, the, the basics. Yeah, I've listened to you since you took over for Jeff a year ago. Thank you. Yeah, by the way, I'm going to mention Jeff in a bit, but we got to take a break now. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Shouldn't have picked you up in the first place. I'm sorry. Yeah, but I'll be back in six minutes and 30 seconds. 500 and 500... 20 seconds, I'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> 511 seconds. <coughs> but meanwhile, Thanks. Scott will regale us with more tales from the front. More tales from the from front. From the front row, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you for putting that timer up there. I will try to remember to look at it. <laughs> um so, uh, so yeah, we've been talking in the chat room about this and that, one thing and another. Um, we talked about uh, TVs, the down mix. Uh, we, uh, uh, Turd Ferguson was talking about uh, smart TVs with built-in Bluetooth audio. Um, and, I, and I originally thought he meant uh, Bluetooth audio reception. And uh, there might be one or two. I, I can't think of any off the top of my head. But Bluetooth audio transmitters, that's a very good question. I don't know the answer to that either. But it would be a great thing for wireless headphones. Uh, so I'll have to look into that. That's a pretty good question. Jim Four asks, what speakers are, uh, do I recommend? Um, just this week, I went down to ELAC, uh, which is a German company that's making uh, a push into the U.S. market. Uh, they got... Uh, Andrew Jones to move from Pioneer over to their company. And uh, he has designed a set of speakers for them that I think are phenomenal. And again, again for the money, like he did at, the, at Pioneer, the, uh, the, the ZLAC speakers are tremendous. Uh, they sound great. Um, there's a whole range of them from floor standers to bookshelves to a center channel to subwoofers. And uh, they're a little more expensive than the Pioneers, but still not tremendously expensive. Um, <clears throat> I think the B5s, uh, which are bookshelves, are uh, in the, I think, $250 a pair range, which is, you know, not very much. So that's... Uh, that that those those are great speakers. The other ones I recommend, of course, are the Pioneers that Andrew Jones designed. They're still available. Uh, and um, uh, SVS makes some excellent speakers. Uh, my colleague on AVS Forum, Mark Henninger, has been reviewing SVS Prime speakers. Uh, that is the line below their top of the line, Ultimate uh, speakers. And uh, those are also really good. I think they're a little more expensive than the ELAC and certainly more than the Pioneers, but uh, they're also really, really great. Um, I had the speaker designer, Smith Freeman, from SVS on my show uh, not too long ago, so you could look that up. Uh, also, Andrew Jones uh, has has been on the show a number of times, including the last time talking about these new ELAC speakers. <clears throat> uh, KC8RLU asks, is there a far better choice of remotes to, to replace any of the Logitech Harmony remotes we've tried? It's frustrating when the remote suddenly freezes or crashes. Hmm. 
You know, I have an old Harmony One, a really old Harmony One, and it has never frozen or crashed. And in fact, I've had a number of Harmony remotes and they've never frozen or crashed. So if yours have, I'm sorry to hear that. That's not, that's not a good thing, believe me. But they remain my favorite universal remotes, primarily because they are organized around activities. So you push a button that says watch TV or watch Blu-ray or listen to the radio or whatever, uh, and it does all that for you. The other thing I really like about them is that the setup is relatively easy. You have to connect the remote to your computer by USB and then go to a website and tell it what equipment you have and what each activity you have, like watch TV or watch Blu-ray or whatever, watch satellite, watch uh, or play games, uh, and which of your equipment is involved in that. And you, once you tell it all of that, then it automatically sets up all the what are called macros, that is the strings of commands that turn on each device and set them to the right input and so on and so forth. And if something happens that a, a device doesn't get a command for some reason, say somebody walked between the remote and the device, uh, you can always just push the help button and it'll probably, that'll probably just fix it right away because it'll probably go, oh, something didn't get turned on and it'll go turn it on and then it'll ask you in the screen, did that fix the problem? And you say yes or no. So... <clears throat> Uh, KC8 RL, RLU said, uh, I had a Harmony re Remote 1, Harmony 1, and it died. Uh, sorry to hear that. Mine's still going strong. Web7186 loves his SVS subwoofer. They do make great, great subwoofers. No question. Uh, hmm. On the one, have you heard of about Tekton? Small internet speaker company, highly rated. I have not heard of Tekton, but uh, since you... Since you uh, mention it, I will go check it out. I think that's a great idea. Uh, R. Chandra is asking, do you know of any receivers that have HD radio integrated into their tuners? I, I can't come up with one off the top of my head, but I'm sure they do. I know I've seen it in specs before, so I'm, I, I know that it, it exists. That's why they were called receivers for so long, as they had radio built they in. They had right? radio in them, yeah, exactly. I think mine still has radio, but I don't know if it has HD. I, it probably doesn't, but I think well, if it's older... Uh, but well, okay, ones, okay this sure. is a question. My I, my Ocu and my Denon, I have two, one in each uh -huh. room, are maybe five years old. Okay, that's not too old. When you when is it time to start? They're not very expensive. When's it no. time to start looking at a new one? Well, I think it's time to start looking at a new one when you significantly change your system in some other way. Uh, oh, like I know. I'll wait till I get the new TV because then I'll need to get a 4K one and I'll need to get one that does Atmos and all that stuff. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And this is what I was about to say, that when you when you move to 4K, you must get an AV receiver right. that has the copy protection compatibility. It's called oh. HDCP 2.2. Not all receivers have it, and this is going to be a right. big problem. Plus support for a, HDMI 2. Right, right. Well, if it has HDCP 2.2, it will automatically have right. HDMI 2. Right, but I'm sure that my... My five-year-old does not support, obviously does not, does not support no. that, right? No. So when UHD Blu-ray comes along or the, the Amazon Fire okay. TV with so I'll get all new, I'll wait till I get all new stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, the That's Amazon the Fire TV is out now. True. And, I, you know, I must admit I don't know for sure that it has uh, HDCP, that it uses HDCP 2.2. That's 2. an interesting. That is an interesting question. Uh, you know, I'm sure the streaming providers want to protect their content as much as the Blu-ray player, the Blu-ray uh, disc providers. Uh, so I would assume, but I have to go verify that the Fire TV will have HDCP 2.2, this new, the newest level of copy protection. And the cr the trick is, and the, what, another little dirty little secret is that the receiver, if you send the, the signal from the device, the source device, through a receiver, it has to have HDCP 2.2. Right. It has to if be it there doesn't, all along. Right. If it, if it doesn't, the signal will never get to the TV. Right. So that's, that's a real critical thing that uh, a lot of people aren't really talking about. <clears throat> so, uh, so, yeah. Revo says, my Harmony One has a puffy battery and I can't get it out to change it. That's Dang. not good. That's really That's not bad. good. That's pretty bad. Yeah, it must be a rechargeable one. It is, obviously. It is. The Harmony One is a rechargeable. Yeah. And, uh, um, you know, mine is quite a few years you old You need now. to take that in because uh, that's a bad, when a battery puff, uh, expands like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Dangerous. That could be dangerous.
Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk about computers, the internet, smartphones, smartwatches, ad blocking. Sure, we'll talk about that. iOS 9, watch OS 2.0. The new iPads, the new iPhones, the new phones in every regard. There's new phones everywhere. I've kind of settled, you know, I figure I'm going to have one Android. This is called a first world problem times two. Uh, <laughs> but it's my job, understand? I'm not boasting. I'm not proud of this. In fact, if, if, it, were up, if it were up to me, I wouldn't have all these phones. But I need to because I need to you know, tell you what's good and bad about each. So uh, the thing that's keeping me up late at night is, well, <laughs> what's the best Android phone out there? And there is no perfect phone, but I'm thinking if I had to pick one, I'm going to say the Galaxy Note 5. Because I like the screen, the stylus, battery life, I wish it were better. Camera's superb, though. Fingerprint reader works. It's got optical image stabilization. It doesn't have SD card slot, but uh, I think I got the 64 gig, and that's probably enough. It certainly seems to hold everything I want to put on it. Just saw a study from an Apple uh, developer about the amount of storage you need. And it turns out, of course, 16 gigabytes, which Apple still sells. I think Apple really wants to be able to say, the new iPhone, it's $650. Starts at $650. Yeah, the one you never in a million years should buy starts at $650 because it only has 16 gigs of storage. And it's just not enough. This app developer, and again, this is just one, I don't even remember what the app was, one particular app, but uh, he, he noted that of all, the, by far, by the way, the number one iPhone model was the 16 gig version. People are cheap. And Apple, see, this is why Apple shouldn't offer this, because Apple's implying that it'll work fine. It will not. Do not do that to yourself. Do not go to, go to the next step up. Don't get a 16 gig iPhone. But uh, of the you know, the vast majority of people with 16 gig iPhones only had a gig or less left. That's nothing. It was full, in other words. People with 64 gig iPhones, the next step up, none of them had come even close to filling them up. 64 is plenty, especially nowadays when we stream music, stream video. We're much less likely to have to store it all. And even if you do store it all, I have a dozen books on my 64 gig phone. I have... Uh, you know, a thousand songs easy. There's plenty of space. So if you're if you're in the market for a new phone, whatever it is, 64 gig, you could probably get away with 32 gigs, but never 16. Never 16. Um, and that's why with the lack of an SD card doesn't kill me. Because if you get a 64 gig phone, it's not you know you don't really need to put another 128 gigs of storage in there. So the Note, uh, I guess, is, you know, best. It's not great battery life, but it's the best of the current bunch. It's not pure Android, but you can get it as, you know, pretty close to by using an alternate launcher and disabling the Samsung and carrier programs on here. Um, gosh, the screen's good. The camera's great. Probably for most of what you do, this is a good choice. And I'm very excited about it. One week from now, I'll have the uh, iPhone 6S. I decided to go with the Plus because, again, battery life, battery life, battery life. And the Plus has remarkable battery life. Plus, nowadays with the big screen, we're kind of, we're kind of liking those big screens, aren't we? Get a lot more done. Old folks like me can see better. It just, uh, it just feels like, why not go for the bigger screen? Optical image stabilization in the camera. The fingerprint reader, spectacular, fast, reliable, and most importantly, secure. That means you can you can depend on it to keep your stuff safe. I like that. So we'll uh, we'll have a we'll have more of a review, of course, in the weeks to come. But uh, I suspect if you if you were to pull me over next week and say, "Show me your phone," I would have a Note Five in my left pocket, <laughs> an iPhone 6s Plus in my right. Then we'll decide from there. Then we, the only, there can be only one. We'll have to decide from there. Uh, we were talking to T. Harris in uh, San Diego. Sorry, I had to interrupt you there. Uh, it's, uh, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, you've you've just been uh, wonderful for me over the years. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we had a break for news. So just uh, just to recap, uh, you you bought a new Dell. Is that right? Yes. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Uh, I this is my fifth laptop. 
and I got a bad one. And support try I made four attempts to fix it through the guys in India. And finally, they said, "Okay, you have to send it back." Well, that's good news because if it's if it's bad, then that's the only way to fix it, probably. Thank, but well, of course, while waiting for the box, I just said I'd rather not have a Dell. I've never had any problem with the other four laptops. No, I can. I got to tell you, there's no technology in the world that won't have some percentage of uh, units will have flaws. What the test is is not that, but whether the company stands behind them. And replaces right, it. Right. right, right. Well, anyway, I just said, you know, I'd rather not send it back. I want, I just want a refund on it. And uh, by the time I got an answer on that, they said it was too late. <laughs> and I just wondered if there's some way for me to send this thing back to to get outside the system. I've made attempts in every way I can think of. I, I so how how? What do you mean too late? Was it more than three months? No. No, but, but the last time we called them, they just said, you're too late. I, I, I'm I, very hard of hearing, and so uh, uh, women, children, and anybody with a heavy accent, I have a very hard time understanding. You, um, you've um, got a great radio voice. I'm, so I'm I, with you on that one. I actually uh, finally broke down and got hearing aids for that reason. I have mine turned all the way up. No? Yeah, yeah. There's, there comes a point where nothing can help, I understand. Correct, correct. So I, I just wanted... To send it back, I I, I, I don't feel comfortable with them. Uh, 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 they in theory, the clock stops, as Doctor Mom in our chat room says says it so eloquently. The minute you said I want I want it sent I want to send it back, and if you can document that you said I want to send it back, that's the date, not any subsequent date. That's the date. So, okay. and in fact, it would be a scam. For them to hear that and say, oh, we'll get back to you, then wait a few weeks till it was outside their window of opportunity, and then say, oh, sorry, it's too late. That would be a scam. Right. So that's when you go to the Better Business Bureau and your local consumer affairs folks, and you say, I need some help. Um, oh, well, maybe that's Because if you can say, you can document, you know, I told them on September 3rd, that right. I wanted to send it back, and they put me off, that's a scam. That's not right. That's illegal. And at okay. that point, you can go and say, uh, you know, unfortunately what happens with these reps, uh, you know, they don't want it to happen on their watch. They I get, understand They get that. dinged. I, I think in many cases, they. this is why sometimes you get such bad customer service is because it's on their watch and they get dinged for customers Correct. that leave, customers that want money back. That's that hurts them and might even hurt them in the paycheck. This is a very bad thing for companies to do. Dell was famous for years for the best world's best tech support. But like every other PC company, when the when the profit margins got so so narrow, they had to cut somewhere. And what they've done is they've outsourced support to these companies in India and China and Canada and all over the world. And, and it's not the best tech support anymore. And it's a shame you can get better support. You have to pay for it. Uh, in a way, I understand that because uh, three it's three warranties with it, uh, Leo. Oh, yeah. Then you're you're golden here. If you bought the warranty, you're golden. You insist. Okay. In fact, next time, ask for the supervisor. Escalate it right to Michael Dell, Round Rock, Texas. You know, you may not even need a consumer advocate. You could do this for yourself because this you should absolutely get support on this one. Thank you. I, I just I just need a, a way to charge them. I don't know how to sue them. No, no, you don't, don't sue them. Just go call and talk to a manager. Talk to somebody. That, not that not the guy you were talking to. Because he, he's trying to save his paycheck, and I don't blame him. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Our show today, if you're interested in the new iPhone, I got a solution for you. What to do with the old iPhone? You know what I'm going to talk about. Go to Gazelle. Gazelle, they're giving new life to use smartphones every single day. Fund your new iPhone by selling your old one, getting cash at gazelle.com, G-A-Z-E-L-L-E.com. They couldn't make it easier. I just love Gazelle. And by the way, they're really an honorable company. We've sold lots of devices to them. And whenever they get a device that they think is worth more than their quote, they will actually give you more money. They have no obligation to do so, but they do because they want you back. 
That's why there's so many satisfied customers at Gazelle. Just go online. You're going to get 30 days locked in on your offer, which is nice. That gives you plenty of time to get a new iPhone or a new phone of any kind. Uh, transfer the data over. Make sure you like it. And then pull the trigger and say, okay, I want my money, Gazelle. They'll send you a box. They pay the postage on anything worth more than a buck. In fact, as long as you're up to this, why don't you, uh, why don't you pile all those gadgets into the, <laughs> into the box? Gazelle even pays cash for broken iPhones. Shipping is free, and for most items, Gazelle will even provide the box. All personal information from the device is removed if you forget to. They have paid out $175 million plus dollars, over 2 million trade-ins, with an excellent, excellent report card on customer satisfaction. I love Gazelle. You will, too. See how much your phone is worth. Just as a little exercise. It's no obligation. There's no cost. Just go to gazelle.com. Say, yeah, I got my old iPhone 6, 16 gigabyte. What's that worth? So I can get the new one. Gazelle.com. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. <clears throat> Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888-ASK-LEO. Phone number, website, techguylabs.com. Paul is in uh, Ocean... Is it? I <laughs> know it's not Ocean Slice. Ocean Ice? I think it's a typo. Where are you from, Paul? Oceanside. 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 Uh, here's a, a C where the D should be. I got it. Hi, Paul. <laughs> Hi. How are you, Leo? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. I've got a question for you regarding the iPad. Um, I I run a division with um, eight technicians. They all have iPads and iPhones, and they need to enter data in the field. I'm looking for an app or software that will allow me to make a, a fillable form that can be used on the iPad where the guys can just pick and choose from um, random choices that are already a part of the Yeah, a custom form. Yes. So uh, there used to be we'd recommend FileMaker for this kind of stuff. I wonder if FileMaker still has their iPad. Let me go check. It's a database program that allows you to, yeah, allows you to do custom databases. And uh, then you can have a, a custom form that you'd fill in on your iPad. And they have the app on the iPad. It's called FileMaker Go. So... Uh, this is this. The advantage of doing it this way is you'd have a database on your desktop that they'd be uh, communicating with, and so and that's what you want. You want all that stuff in one place, and then they'd use FileMaker Go on their iPhone or their app, uh, iPad to fill in the oh. data. Okay, and, so it's FileMaker Go. Yeah, file. You, but you need the FileMaker desktop app as well. So go to FileMaker.com and you can actually see the solution this has been around for ages and they've and they've done a good job i'm sure there are others that will do something like this but boy filemaker is kind of the 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 king of the hill on this the other advantage of using filemaker is there are third-party filemaker uh, people who can design this for you if you don't want to take take uh the time to do it oh yeah i can find those on like odesk uh odesk i'm sorry say that again uh, yeah, well, never, never mind. It's a third party. Oh. So, like, you know, there's guys who are customizers. Okay. So, so uh, yeah, I don't know Odesk, but there, I, maybe, yeah, there are guys who are customizers who will then say, oh, yeah, what do you want? Custom solution? No problem. We'll do it in FileMaker. FileMaker's excellent. Uh, I'm sure there are others' choices, and if people in the chat room uh, or listening want to call and suggest others, uh, that'd be great. What you need, obviously, is a desktop app because you're going to have a database of this stuff that the text fill in. You need some central place to store that. And then with that, you'd like have uh, iPad and iPhone uh, solutions and ideally custom form with your company's name and they tap buttons and they fill out stuff. That would be great. It's a really powerful program. I haven't used it in years. And I'm glad to see that they've kept it up to date. Uh, FileMaker.com. Yeah, I'll give you an idea of how long it's been around. Their current version is FileMaker 14. Wow. Bruce, Los Angeles, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hey, Bruce. Yeah, it's coming. And by the way, while Bruce is coming to the phone, let me do somebody pointed out, of course, you could use Google Docs, couldn't you? So, Google Docs lets you create forms, fillable forms on the web. That you could actually, that's a free solution that would be pretty nice. So, in fact, you see this a lot. Uh, people will give you surveys and so forth using Google Docs, which is free. So, you could have the, you'd have your text surf to that website on Safari, fill it out, 
save it, and then you have access to it at the office immediately. That's another good way to go. Google Docs. Thank you. Great solution. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Bruce. Uh, yes. Um, I have um, uh, old equipment or hardware on my uh, computer. which I, I have old equipment as well. Yeah. And it needs Windows uh, 2000 for one of them and XP for another, and I have Windows 7 on. And Holy of cow. Well, it's necessary. And I have a loader on Windows 7 that allows me to go to any of the uh, platforms, and Good. I want to know if I upgrade to Windows 10, am I going to be able to have the same loader? What's the loader? Well, the load is when you first boot up, yeah. and it says what you want to go ah, into. Ah, so you have a uh, you have a multi-boot operating system. Right. Got it. And you have a bootloader that will say, oh, well, I see. In fact, Windows does this by, uh, I haven't tried it with 10, but. That's what worries me. I called Microsoft, and they said, well, we don't know. <laughs> Somebody will be. Somebody will have done this. Uh, who's listening to the show? Call me or go in the chat room. And the uh, up to uh, Windows. Certainly, Windows Seven did this when you install Windows Seven and it yeah. saw XP in two thousand. It'd say, "Oh, I'm not the only Windows. Would you like me to overwrite those, or would you like to have all three of them?" And then it'll put a bootloader in. Right. There are third party. It's called a bootloader. Yes. There, there are third party bootloaders that uh, are out there. I've recommended some in the past. Um, so they sometimes require a little more messing around because windows if windows does it itself it's going to take care of all of all of oh, that's, the, that's my question yeah that's the way to do it um that's a great question yeah, so uh okay. pc guy <laughs> who says he dual boots between 7 and 10 did 10 recognize windows 7 and give you the option pc uh, he's in the chat room pc guy mm -hmm. did it give you the option to uh do a dual boot system or did you have to do it by hand you have to do it by hand. You need a third-party bootloader that will uh, uh, do that. PC Guy says, yes, it did. So Windows 10 at least is savvy enough to see Windows 7. Right, but will it then allow me to go into uh, XP? Well, I would hope so. So I guess what you need to do <laughs> is a little experimentation. Um, I, I think what what would I would recommend is don't do the Windows upgrade, obviously, because that will eliminate. The upgrade will eliminate whatever you upgrade. So if you take uh -huh. your Windows 7, 7 installation and take the upgrade offer, mm -hmm. uh, it'll there goes Windows 7. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. So what you'll need to do is install it as you have done previous versions of Windows with an installer. You don't. They don't do disks anymore. You could put it on a USB key and install it. And see if it says those magic words. Ah, I see you have other versions of Windows. Would you like to make a multi-boot system? You will be able to back out. If it doesn't say that, you won't, ha you won't have done any damage yet. If it doesn't work, there are bootloaders that will work uh, with a little more effort, but they'd explain how to do that. Easy BCD mm -hmm. is one. Uh, that's probably the most up-to-date one. And uh, that will allow you to... It's from Neo Smart Technologies. So would I be able to do, you said I can't take the free one. I have to. Yeah, so if you do the upgrade, you know, you, hey, get Windows 10 free. Right. It will wipe out the current version. Hmm. So there's that does not set up a dual boot for you. So that would wipe out uh, all the equipment I have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so okay. you don't want to do that. You will want to install Windows 10 much the same way as you installed previous versions of Windows. Which from means purchase Windows 10. Uh, no. Oh. Um, that's an interesting question. I don't think so. So I think you can download Windows 10. Uh, the ISO is available, the ISO, which is a you know pre-made disk mm -hmm. on, that you can download from Microsoft's site. It's available. Mm -hmm. uh, it's easily, freely downloaded. You can put it on a disk. It will check to see if you have Windows 7. And then what you want to do is make sure that it doesn't overwrite it. That's, mm -hmm. that's the tricky thing. But will the loader then allow me to still? It'll see yeah. with seven though. Because you have it'll seven, and it'll say, "Oh, you're you're eligible for a free upgrade." Yep. I don't think th that's a really interesting question. I don't think that that requires that you eliminate Windows Seven. That's mm -hmm. basically the question you're asking. Well, if, I'll keep and see if anybody answers. Make that. a backup, and we'll keep an we'll keep an eye on here. Uh, and then Easy BCD is a really good solution that allows you to do exactly what you want, mm -hmm. which is. Even even if I have Windows 10 on there, it's Windows 10 and UEFI ready, and that's key because mm -hmm. the uh, you pro if you have a newer computer, UEFI mm -hmm. and the Secure Boot will be very tricky to deal with, but this will take care of it. It's uh, it's from NeoSmart, NeoSmart.net. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. You would have to buy a copy. So part of the license agreement is that it is an upgrade. 
uh, some, somebody in the chat room saying, and this kind of makes sense, that it is an upgrade, which means you cannot use the old version of Windows anymore. Now, the good news is it's not, I mean, the, I bought a copy of Windows 10. It's not, it's like 129 bucks. It's not as expensive as previous versions. That's Johnny Jet. <laughs> oh, it's just changed. What happened? It's changing. I've been everywhere. Johnny Jet, he is our travel guru. He is everywhere. The man never sleeps, never rests. And he, but he does, wherever he is, join us from the road to talk about using technology to travel better. Johnny is in some, it looks like a mall. Looks like a mall, you're but in, look what's right next to me. Uh, are you in a hotel? Nope. There's a giant screen. Are you in an airport? This is an airport. You got it. It's wow, an is this a nice airport? All right, John. Take a guess which one. Huh. Um, I don't know. It's a very nice, it's the nicest airport I've ever seen in with lots Thank of Thank you. Nice stuff. Is this your is this Johnny Jet's airport? You have your it own would, airport now? Well, you'd be surprised to hear that I'm in Los Angeles International oh, Airport. Wow. I've been there. I was this just there new, last week. New Tom Bradley Terminal. Nice. And it's my favorite terminal in America, and actually I'm here shooting promo videos with lexishappening.com. Oh, nice. So, you know, because I always talk about how incredible this terminal is, uh, they they had me come out and do some of my travel wanna, tips, so we're, we're wanna, in the middle of them doing it right I'm now. I'm going to fly to LAX. Now, let me ask you, because uh, last time I was there, um, were, are they going to tear down that old, the rest, remember the restaurant that was there? And the, the, the encounter? No, they're not going to take down the encounter. Good. That's an iconic building. It is iconic. I, what they've been doing is complimenting it, which is pretty cool. They added uh, 91 light poles all around the uh, airport. They added an LED light band. You know, over a nice. mile long, that also complements the uh, pylons, the p uh, pavilions when you come out. They change colors. It's really cool at night. There seems but to be a competition. It, for a long time, airports were like bus stations. People didn't put any money into them. All of a sudden, they're upgrading LaGuardia. They're upgrading airports. All I think having a nice airport, I think cities are realizing that's important. It was embarrassing. Honestly, it was embarrassing to land from overseas, sometimes from third world countries, where that airport was so much better <laughs> than the ones in America. And now finally, you know, airports are starting to spruce up, especially LAX. They, you know, they're pumping hundreds of million dollars into all the terminals. This one is completed. And Looks uh, good. It's just, it's, it's just, it's, you know, it's, it's, this is my favorite. Um, is this the international terminal? What terminal? This is the international terminal. So, so if you're coming in from overseas, this is where you'll land. Exactly, but you're not going to see this if you land because I just landed here. Um, yeah, you'll go. Wheels. You'll go straight to customs. This is for departures, but it's really cool. They have that local stuff, great. which I love. They have, uh, you know, Fred Siegel, which you only find in Santa Monica. They have uh, all these local restaurants, and you know, SF, SFO has done the same. They brought in local restaurants, which makes that airport incredible. I guess because it is a competitive. So, it is a competitive thing because LAX, you could also fly to Burbank, you could also fly to Long Beach. There are other airports in the area. Similarly, San Francisco yeah, competes with Oakland. Compete. Yeah, the San Francisco can compete, but not yeah. the other small. No, places. no, the small small airports compete on size, not on amenities. Right, <laughs> for sure. So anyway. Um, so my, actually, my website is lexishappening.com, was one of them. But I have an app, and I do have another website for you. So are you ready for my app? <laughs> I'm enjoying the screen behind you, though, by the way. This is uh, very, whatever it's going I on. Can't, I different. can't get my big head out of the way. There's different stuff going on all the time. It's really this. But now it's an ad. That's so right. cool. It's a and beautiful. And what's cool about, by the way, I just saw you brought up the uh, airport website. What's cool about it is that these guys actually will tell you where the construction is, uh, what the, where the traffic is, more importantly, so you can stay away. And they, they encourage travelers to go upstairs if you're dropping people off or actually for oh, picking nice. people up or vice versa, which is, you know, some airports don't allow you to do that, but LAX does. So my tip, by the way, is if you're ever traveling through LAX, you know, have them drop you off or pick you up at departures, not arrivals, especially if it's um, if it's not busy up there or vice versa. That's what, uh, that's what Silver Car does, which is nice. Yeah. Yes. That's something so, you told you taught me about the silver car. car yeah, silver car is great. Yeah, I love yeah, it. And yeah, they're here. Yeah. But uh, here, here's something. Here's a cool app. It's called Blah Blah Car. Have you heard of this one? <laughs> B L B L A B L A Car. No. What is that? <laughs> okay. So this, this is actually a billion dollar company. They're huge overseas. Um, you know, they're they're not here yet in America, but it's great for travelers because, you know, it, you know, it's it's a. I love the whole um, sharing economy. 
So what they'll do is they will, if someone's going on a long ride, it's not for city within the city. It's for, let's say you're going from London to Manchester or something. You just type it in. Ah. And if someone's doing that route, they'll tell you exactly when they're leaving, what kind of car they have, what kind of uh, driver rating they have, their age. And you can, you can, you know, hitch a ride basically for, a, uh, you know, a very low, a very small amount of money. I've just told them I'm in Germany, and now they're in German, so I don't... <laughs> yeah, so, so go back to the UK. But they, I, I should have told so right them I was in, in, uh, in England. <laughs> yeah, they're in, they're in England, Poland, Netherlands, Mexico, Hungary, Italy, India, Croatia, France, Spain, Germany, Serbia, Russia. But it's, it's awesome for travelers because, you know, let's say you can't find a bus that's going that direction or a train. You can go on a blah, blah car and see if someone's going the route that you're going. Or if you have a car, you can make some money. Instead of traveling, traveling alone, you can get someone to, uh, you know, help you share the gas money or whatever or keep you company. And uh, the reason so why it's called blah, blah car is because it wants to know if you like to talk a lot. You can, you can choose, <laughs> you know, you can choose blah, blah. I do blah, not want to talk. Crazy. That's the only blah, reason blah, I wouldn't blah. do this. But you can say I want shut up and drive. Yes, exactly. The I blah, want the blah shut up and drive little, button. <laughs> exactly. I bet you like to talk to people you're driving with. I do. I mean, that's, I know. that's one of the best parts about traveling. You're you very social. The yeah. location. I like to look at buildings. <laughs> oh, my wife my wife looks at me like, why are you speaking to... I speak to everybody, and I always ask them where they're from. You're smart. I should do that. I just... I'm shy. Blah, I, blah, B-L-A, B-L-A, car, dot com. This is very cool. Not yet in the U.S., but all over the rest of the world. Very nice. It's, it, yeah, I, I mean, I love it. I'm sure it's going to be here. They just raised $160 million. They're valued at $1.2 billion. Wow. So this company's not going away. This is, this is the real deal. This is, uh, this is uh, wow, that's very interesting. Um, it's it's uh, the, the, the car sharing, the ride sharing, the sharing economy. It, it, and that's what I love and about it. And it beats hitchhiking. Heck yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, at least you can see reviews for the person and stuff, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You don't you don't just take it a pig in a poke. No. Pigs aren't not very good all. drivers, I would I'm gonna put those I'm gonna put it down a little bit. <laughs> I love this. So you're in the middle of doing a, a a promotional video there, huh? Correct, for the website. And which I also love about that, you know, they're willing to spend money to help travelers. So I've been sharing all my tips and secrets that's about nice. LAX, the shortcuts and things like that. And that Well you that's know, your home they, airport, isn't it? It is, and yeah. I always tell people it's my favorite airport yeah. in America. I like SFO is starting to get better. Terminal Two, they just updated, and it really is pretty nice. But yeah, LAX, there's something magical about arriving in Los Angeles at LAX. Well, you first just, of all, the weather is incredible. You I, really have weather delays. Yeah. Um, and what I also love about LAX, which people don't really give it credit for, it's a horseshoe. It's so simple. Yeah. It's to get around. Yeah. Yeah, some, there's what, airports. I'm going to Denver less. in a few months. You got to take a train to get anywhere. <laughs> it's like you're, exactly. It's so huge, and you, you can't get anywhere. Fortunately, they have nice cowboy music. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> hey, that, that, that is a nice airport. It was actually it's a beautiful airport, but it's just out in the middle of it's nowhere. In the it's very far from everywhere, including Denver, and. It's huge. And do not speed, by the way. Do not speed on that airport road. No. The cops are notorious for for hanging out on that uh, airport road. I'm getting a uh, silver car because uh, Denver now has a silver car there. This okay, is but make sure your foot's not too heavy. No, light foot. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a law-abiding gentleman. LAX I, is happening. I come, and I'm leaving this week on a around-the-world trip. So <gasps> Wait a minute. You just got back? Country. What are you, nuts? You just got back from a around-the-world trip. You know, my, my world, my, my job is to travel the world. And so I, you know, I try and live up to it. Is there anywhere you haven't been that you really want to go? There's plenty. Uh, I, honestly, there's so it's many. It's a big world. Yeah. Here's where you should go, everybody. JohnnyJet.com. Find out what Johnny Jet's up to. Get his free travel newsletter. And he joins us every week to give us apps and websites and great travel ideas. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you for having me. All right. Enjoy LAX. All right. Thank you. I will. Bye-bye. <laughs> Usually, usually the airport's the last place you want to be, but you know what? This looks pretty nice. It's a, it's an. I know, love the chairs. This is the Arne Jacobson chair. They're Danish. It's what I grew up with. Yeah, those yeah, are I mean, comfy. They have them at SFO at Terminal Two now too. Must be a too. thing. Must be a thing. Yeah, it is a thing. It's a thing. But, is that real ivy things? on the uh, Fred Sager? No, 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 that's just that's just a photo. But check out this uh, departure board if I can find it.
Ooh. They can't really see it. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888. Ask Leo. That's the phone number. Uh, Debug <laughs> is in San Jose. Hi, Debug. Oh, Leo, good to talk to you. Is it Debug or Debug? Debug. Mm -hmm. I'm a software engineer, and debugging is my favorite thing to do. With is it really? Yeah. It's like solving a puzzle and figuring out why doesn't it work like I think it should. So good, a good uh, coder is a good debugger. I mean, you cannot ignore because no software is perfect. And, right. it, and, it, and it often doesn't do what you think it's going to do. So you have to figure it out. And debugging is the process of kind of stepping through the code, the program, until you see why it does that strange thing. Yes, exactly. What, co what language do you code in? Uh, my favorite is uh, straight C followed by C++. And do you use Visual Studio? What, what debugger are you using? Uh, I... Microsoft has always had the best tools. Yep. I haven't been working in the Microsoft <laughs> world for yeah. a few years, but um, yeah, Visual Studio is uh, awesome. But it's not what you. I mean, you could code for Android in Visual Studio, but it, it's most people don't. Yeah, it's just easier yeah. to go with yeah, you go know native. Android Studio right. and you know the standard tools. What can I do for you, Debug? I love your name. Well, so anyway, Leo, I've I've listened to you for years and. I've, I'm excited to talk to you. Thank you. And I've written an app that I believe I'm going to piss off the Twitter. I'm going <laughs> to tick off the Twitter. <laughs> Are you about to plug something? I'm going to tick off the Twitterverse, yes. No, you're going to make me happy if it's something cool. If it's just some dumb thing, I'm not going to be happy. So what do you think? I, I, I think it's really cool. All I right. believe in this app, Leo. I've spent a year and a year and a half developing it, and it's – I. I really believe in this. It's one of the modes that it has has safety implications. Mm. So I'm going to tell you about that one. Anyway, let me. Can I get the name out there? Please. Pick grenade. P I C G R E N A D E. Pick grenade. Is it an app? Well, now on Google Play. All right, I'll go to the Play Store. I'm a, I'm an Android guy. Play.google.com. I'll search for. Pick grenade. Pick grenade. What is? Thank you very much. What does it do? Uh, one, it's a camera app. Oh, I like that. that. That takes pictures in three of the modes can be used unattended. It will take pictures depending upon what criteria you set. Does there it is blow things interval, up. <laughs> there's interval mode where uh -huh. it'll take a picture every so often. There is touch mode, where it'll take a picture when you touch the screen. Uh -huh. There's face mode, where it'll take a picture when you when it detects a face. And motion detection mode, Ooh. it'll take a picture when it detects motion. So you could set up your phone, sit it somewhere, run that program, and then somebody comes in the room, you'd actually see a picture. Correct. Mm -hmm. Now, the special thing about it is... One, it can take pictures absolutely silently. It's a surveillance camera. No shutter, camera. no flash, no sound, mm. no nothing. Mm. It can be, take pictures completely undetected. All right. Well, it's two ninety nine, so it's not free. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, so uh, all I can say, I haven't tried it. I'll have to give it a try, and I'll give you a review. How about that? Well, and maybe, uh, maybe uh, I'll, it's a it's a fairly challenging uh, image. <laughs> it's a bright green hand grenade for the uh, icon, but I, I will uh, I'll give it a try. I thank you uh, for the call. I appreciate it, Andrew in Tennessee. Hello, Andrew. Hey there, Leo. How, how's it going today? It's great. How are you? Not too bad. Just. Uh, on my way to my next city to do my next job, so... Oh, are you a hired gun? Have gun, will travel? Well, not, not quite. More like, uh, here's, the pro here's the next project we're doing. Go there. What do you do? What kind of projects? I Right now, the project we're working on, we're testing uh, 911 for Volte service. 
Ah, interesting. Volte is the voice over LTE that every every carrier is starting to use. The quality can be superb. It, yeah, and people and people ask me what it's like, and I tell them to think of it as a Skype quality yeah, call. Over it is cell network. It's, when I started getting calls from LTE Volte calls, I was like, "What's going on? This sounds too good." <laughs> What is, what is going on? This sounds weird. When we first hear it. Yeah, it's it's a little weird. So you go around, and of course, 911 has to work. E911, by federal law, has to work on these right. services, so you mm -hmm. go around and test it. That's neat. What can I do for you? Well, I have a 1M8. Now, the, uh, the microphone on it has failed. So I now have to use either speaker. <laughs> it doesn't make it very good for making phone calls, does it? No, it doesn't. No. So I either have to use speakerphone or uh, Bluetooth headset, which, which is what I'm doing right now. Now, this phone is a couple of years old. Right. It was a great phone in its time. It is. And, and even even now, I, I still think it's a great phone. It it takes amazing pictures, even though it's... The, Five the, megapixels, but they had this... And I loved the Zoe... I love some of the weird camera features that was built that were built into the HTC One. I'm afraid HTC's not been doing well of late. They're a little sickly. Um, I don't think they're going to go away because they make what many agree is the best virtual reality helmet of all things, and they've teamed yeah, up with Steam, it. which is of course the big gaming concern. So they have they're probably going to just pivot. But I don't know if I'd buy another HTC phone. I don't know how much longer they're in this game. Although you know they make one. Uh, it's got even a better camera. They went to 20 megapixels. Right. Um, yeah, they have nine. You like Android? Well, I, I already have an iPhone for work, I don't, so I don't want to have two iPhones. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I have to say the new iPhones are... are I'm starting to get a little excited about them. If I could, if I could drop the money on a new iPhone yeah. to replace my current 5C for work, I would do it in a heartbeat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you might want to. I mean, there's some new features, but and the camera, by the way, in the new iPhone, at 12 megapixels is rumored to be stunning. But I'll let you know next week. But if you want an Android phone, I had a little conversation earlier uh, during the show on how challenging it is. There's no perfect Android phone. Right. You have to decide what you're willing to give up. Is battery life important? Uh, no, not really, because I'm in the car all the yeah, time. Yeah, so I you can charge it. Car charger. So I, I really like the Moto uh, X Pure, the new Moto X. But I have to say, my current top-of-the-line Android phone, and by the way, it's as expensive as a new iPhone, is the Note 5. If you want to save money, then I would get the Moto X. That's 400 bucks. That, and that's what I was thinking, but does, the, the, does that Moto X Pure have um, NFC, and, and I'm really starting to get into HDR photography. With it, does it does both. It does both, yes. Cool. Yeah, cool. I got to run. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hold on a sec, so uh, we, I can continue off the air. Yeah, it does have NFC, which works great. The design is beautiful. There's no more beautiful phone. I got the uh, Ebony back, and I love it. Okay. Um, I kind of was unhappy about battery life, mostly. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and I heard you talk about that earlier. Camera's great. No OIS. You know, I really want fingerprint in every phone I buy now. And, and does the Pure have that? Nope. Oh, okay. All right. And, uh, you know, you, neither does your 5C, right? Oh, no, the 5C doesn't, uh, nor does my uh, M8. So and you that, won't miss it. <laughs> right. Just just when you once you get it, you won't want to go back. It's more like that. And there's actually yeah. a compelling security argument for it because uh, if it's well implemented, and I believe it is well implemented on uh, the uh, Android phone, certainly on the iPhone, um, mm -hmm. it, it really does secure your content so that nobody can get into it. And I'll give you my, my number one reason I want to, well, there's two. One is for, Android Pay or Apple Pay, yeah. and I and I use and I use Android Pay. Okay, then you really uh, once in a while for like just on vending machines. Yeah, it's really nice to have that uh, secured because you got a credit card in there. It's also good for LastPass. I use LastPass, and LastPass will allow me to authenticate with a fingerprint. So it's very fast and easy. It doesn't require any password entry or PIN entry, and it is fully secured. So okay. there's something to be said for that as well. I, I, but that's maybe that's not an issue for you yet. The next no, phone, probably. That's something else I'm just starting to look at, um, password managers. And one I'm really looking into is LastPass, because I know you've talked about Love LastPass. And if you have a fingerprint reader, you know, I would... Well, you'll see, price is an issue, though, right? You don't want to spend 1000 bucks on a phone. 
Right, right. Yeah, this uh, you know this Note Five that I have is eight hundred fifty bucks. That's crazy. Yeah, and, and I'm not a big fan of fan either. Yeah, I'm not. I hate I had, Samsung with a passion. I had I had I had an S three and that was amazing. I used S fours for Me my too. Uh, Volte. I had I had uh, the S three was the last good phone. This Note Five is as good. I really they've 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 understood that people don't want TouchWiz. They've really the S voice. I just disable it. I don't use it. But uh, you know what? I think you'd like the Moto X. You sound like a pure Android guy. There are yeah. features in the Moto X that are great. You drive around a lot. It knows you're driving. Um, it's really good. In a lot of respects, it's a great phone. Sure looks good. Okay. Now, in, in that, so that's, you can get it on uh, Amazon, I'm assuming. Uh, no, get it, no, get it from Moto Maker. You don't want it on Amazon because Moto Maker lets you customize it. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to uh, talk high tech computers, the internet, smartphones, smart watches. Boy, a smartphone mania today, isn't it? 8888 ask Leo. That's the number. 888 827 5536. Toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. Outside the country, eh, use Skype. Yeah, just Skype in. It's free. Website is techguylabs.com. When I talk about stuff or I answer a question, we always put all that information there. If you have a comment, no need to yell at the radio. You can add your thoughts right there in the comment section. That's what it's there for. No sign up, no fee. Just free and open, like the web is supposed to be. Techguylabs.com. Uh, J5 in the chat room made a very important point. And uh, I appreciate that, J5, sharing a sad story about a friend of his who passed away and uh, nobody could get to his, open his smartphone up to get the information about next of kin, emergency services, it was locked, right? Not a reason not to lock your phone, folks. Lock your phones. Please, do me a favor. I know it's a pain. There are easy ways to unlock them. That's why I love a fingerprint reader that's painless and fast and effective. But you're right. This is an issue. And that's why there's a standard called ICE. I-C-E, in case of emergency... And it is a great idea to look for an ICE program for your phone uh, or to find their ways on almost every smartphone to have the lock screen have information about next of kin, allergies. Uh, you know, if, if imagine you, you, you've been injured, you can't talk, your smartphone's there in your pocket. The first thing the ambulances, uh, the EMTs, the emergency medical technicians will do is they'll go for your phone, and they hope you have the ICE information on that front there. Set it up. Uh, that way they can at least reach your next of kin. They can see if you have any allergies to uh, medication. Uh, very important. ICE. You can actually find out more about it at emergencystandard.org talks about the apps and so forth that you can put on your iPhone or your Android phone uh, that will help emergency technicians, police officers. Uh, and, and they also have ideas about where to put this information as well. Six places emergency personnel are trained to look in your glove compartment, your wallet or purse, on a bicycle or a motorcycle, under the seat. If you bicycle a lot, you might want to put that emergency information on a card under your seat. In the home, believe it or not, look in the refrigerator, refrigerator, dairy, or butter dish. So you have a butter compartment in your refrigerator. They are trained to look there. So put some information there. And, of course, if you have a smartphone, they also look there. And that's a great idea to have some ice information on your lock screen. It's a great thing to keep in mind. And thank you, J5, for sharing that sad story. But I'm glad you did because it gave us the opportunity and... Maybe we'll save some lives by putting that information out. 8888-ASK-LEO. That's the phone number. 888-827-5536. Jordan's in Hawaii. Aloha, Jordan. Hello. Hey, welcome. What can I do for you? Yeah, I actually need help with my website, but I don't want to advertise it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> we're, um, we're trying to put the kibosh on the free plugs. It, it, I have to admit, it's gotten out of hand the last few weeks. So thank you for okay. respecting that. I appreciate it. Well, so I've I basically opened the domain just mainly for the email. 
or about the demand for the email? Yeah, I recommend that. In fact, I, you know, it, people say, oh, I don't want to change. I've, I'm, I've had Juno.com for years. I don't have to tell everybody. Well, the next time you set up an email address, get a domain name, get your family name or whatever, and then you can easily and usually inexpensively, almost always free, forward mail from that domain name to Gmail or Yahoo Mail or whatever you want to use. And if you change your server, no big deal. Your email will not change. It's like having a permanent email address. So good on you. Yeah. Well, I have, I have questions probably for another call in the future okay. regarding that too. But um, because I have the domain, I figured if people see it in, the, in my email address, they're going to try to browse to it. And I wanted to at least have a placeholder there or something there. And yeah, I wouldn't worry too I mean, you can certainly. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Uh, and, but if you want to do it, I think it's a great idea. So here's, there's a couple of ways you could do it. You can create a cover page for the internet. Well, let me, can I let you know what I got set up right yeah, now? Yeah, sure. Um, cause I've been playing with, uh, IIS and Windows IIS. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're not going to set up a web server in your closet, are you? Uh, actually I have it on a virtual machine on my desktop. <laughs> okay. You're more of a geek than I gave you credit for. You know, this is a great thing if you want to learn how web servers work how, and all that. I don't generally recommend yeah, it. I mean, that's that's more my was my goal with yeah, the learning experience. That's fine. But at the same time, if if I can put up an HTML with links to all my all Why my stuff. Why not? Just remember that when you're running a server inside your personal network, you're inviting people from the outside world into your home. Yeah, that that was my concern. Uh, yeah, I didn't know how well isolated it. Yeah, <laughs> so it's really important. You know, I mean, this is but part you, of the learning process. I don't want to advertise on on your radio. Yeah, yeah, you don't want people going there. Uh, yeah, that's the other thing is you don't have as much bandwidth as a web serving company does. In fact, what's yeah. your upstream bandwidth on your internet? Um, it's. I think I just upgraded to twenty gigabytes. Down. First of all, it's uh, no, it was 100 down, 20, 20 up. 20 megabits up. All right. So yeah, um, that sorry. means a couple, you know, that means a number of people at the same time can come see your site. You know, most, most uh, when, when you buy a website, most hosting companies, it starts at 100, mega, 100 megabits to a gigabit upstream. Uh, oh, this is like, the, on my, over here, it's like the third from the top tier. Yeah, but well, that's fine. But just remember... Um, it's not. Just remember that you know you can't have, but you don't care. You know it's just onesie yeah, twosie. I don't, in, I don't intend on directing yeah. people to it. It's so, just right. If, if it's in case they type in your URL. And I figure if it ends up crashing my network, then hey, business is booming enough that I can afford <laughs> it's those worth it. things. Yeah. So that's fine. Just make sure you isolate that machine. Um, the best well, okay. way to do that was to is it's a virtual machine because I'm using a Hyper-V. It's not. That's um, not the problem. It's not the machine. It's the people coming into your network, right? Yeah. So you've now yeah. given them a door they can go through. It's port 80. Yeah. They can come in into your so network. I, yeah, port 80, obviously. So you have to make sure that your so the server it doesn't have any vulnerabilities that they could then take advantage of uh, and then get into the rest of your network with. you got to be really I actually careful. moved. After I did that, I moved the rest of my network within a second router. Yes. And then I kept that. that yes. Serve because I That's have, what I was going to suggest. You have two routers. I can never, I ne I can never figure out how to get the IIS working on uh, within Windows itself, uh, the client version. <laughs> yeah, but you're supposed brother, to run Windows Server, I think. But anyway, that's yeah, that's neither. Gave me a, a, a license. <laughs> you're doing the server. you're doing it the hard way, but you wanted to learn how to do that. That's fine. Yeah. But you also have to be a security guru. Anybody running a website. Uh, is it's incumbent upon them to secure it, not just for you, but for the rest of the world. So, but it's out, you know, you're absolutely isolating from the rest of your network by having two routers. Stuff doesn't go, probably cannot go upstream and then back into your network. So I think you're all right there. Uh, make sure that you run as secure a setup as you can in that local machine running IIS. And I think that's fine. You're not publishing the address. It's not like hackers are going to seek you out. Although, the way they work, they just go through IP addresses, you know, with with automated tools looking for vulnerabilities. For normal people, <laughs> there are a number of places that will create an internet cover page for you. Uh, about dot me is one, for instance. Uh, you can then have that uh, since you've already modified your domain name system, your DNS for your uh, address. You can modify it a little bit further to forward any requests to that address to your about.me page. That way people will get a single cover page with information about you if they ever should say, hey, that's his email address. I wonder if he's got a website. 
It's a good idea, actually. Uh, everybody should have a website, at least a cover page. 8888-ASK-LEO, Leo Laporte, The Tech Guy. I think I have an about.me. I should check. I think I set it up many moons ago. Yes! There I am with my dog. This was just a mess with it. So the idea was um, it's about.me slash Leo Laporte. And then you put in there links to, you know, your Twitter and your. Your Twitter, your Facebook, your, you know, all of your different stuff. So people can find that. It's like a little resume. I did not do this seriously because I never refer to anybody, refer anybody to it, but that's an example. Hey, did I mention that uh, this show is brought to you by the best printers in the world? Epson! I don't know, you know that, Epson! Especially these new EcoTank printers. Man, I just love what Epson's up to. We talk a little bit about the Workforce printer. Uh, you can find out more if you go to Epson.com and uh, click the link on the uh, new um, uh, Precision Core. This is a technology that came to... Epson's been using in their industrial printers for a long time. <laughs> this almost seems impossible. 40 million dots per second with Precision Core. And, and by the way, each dot is a different size. They're talking nanoliter so that you have exactly the right amount of ink to get perfect printing, high quality. When I print with my Precision Core uh, Epson Workforce Pro, it prints like, j -j 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 -j. there's a page, j -j -j -j. it's like a page a second. It's amazing. Print shop quality too. Vibrant colors, clear, crisp text. The high resolution Epson print chips are one of the fastest inkjet printing technologies in the world. Take a look at the all-in-one Epson Workforce Pro and look too at their new EcoTank with it comes in the box with two years of ink. That's about 50 cartridges worth. So there's Workforce Pros with EcoTanks as well. Just really sweet. Unlike laser printers, there's no warm-up time. You can print on a wide range of media. They're very energy efficient to get the job done. Workforce printers, they make mobile device printing easy, too. I have it set up so it does works with Google Print and AirPrint. And then work, pr work group connectivity and a business is great. We have one at work and one at home. Epson and the new Workforce printers, find out what they can do for you and your business. E-P-S-O-N, Epson.com. Epson built to perform. Yeah, there's one dedicated to uh, all the geeks in the audience today. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, taking your calls, talking high tech. Uh, Christy is next, Valencia, California. Hi, Christy. Hi, Leo. Okay, so I recently exchanged my old Note 2 for a Note 5. You didn't Are stick you? the pen in wrong, did you? <laughs> uh, no. You can, I don't. <laughs> it breaks oh, it. You can't. <laughs> I found that out. I have a Note 5 as well. You can actually put the pen in upside down, and if you do, you'll snag the sensor that tells whether the pen has been removed or not. Really? Yes, yeah, okay. so don't do that. Don't even be tempted, because I thought, oh, no problem. I'm not going to stick it all the way in. I'll just stick it in a little way, and it got stuck. And I had Interesting. to... Interesting. Okay, yeah. I, I, don't, I haven't been paying attention to how I've been putting that pen back Yes, in, start paying attention. <laughs> Okay, I will. And if you get it stuck, go online. There's you, there's techniques for getting it out carefully. Because you'll be tempted just to withdraw. It doesn't take much effort. But then it snaps yeah. a little tiny plastic widget. And, you know, the only thing you lose is that feature that lets you pop the pen out and write on the blank screen. Which I like. Oh, well. Can't do that yeah, anymore. That's not much to lose. So, no. It's not the end of the world. So, what is it? Do you like your Note 5? I love it, except um, it's... Well, it's not the Note 5 that's complicating my life. It's AT&T. Oh, welcome to the I think, club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I love my Note 5. Um, but when I bought it, I, uh, there was a promotion going on where you can get a free tablet with a new phone. So I went for it thinking that it would be nice. Oh, don't ever fall for those. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I you know, I wanted to have something in my office. Free. 
free. Yeah, free. Free except for ten dollars a month. I'm yeah, no, we won't charge more. Yeah, yeah. Some extra. some charges may apply. Yeah. So, um, I got it home, and Netflix wasn't working on it. Everything else will stream just fine. YouTube, podcast. What kind of uh, tablet did they foist upon you? The Tab 4. Oh, it's a Galaxy. Okay. Yeah. So that should work. And I don't know anything about tablets. I mean, I've always been a Mac baby, and I was I thought I'd get a... Yeah, it, ain't, it ain't an iPad, but you know what? For watching Netflix in your office... Great. Oh, yeah, I, all I, I know. It was just, it was like sort of a no-brainer, and I don't have yeah. to drag my laptop all over the place. Yeah. Um, so it, it does everything else fine, but Netflix, what happens when you try to use Netflix? Netflix will open for between one and, at the very most, 60 seconds. Oh. But usually it goes for about two to four seconds, and then it just quits. Yeah, and, it's just a broken and, install. Okay, okay, well, okay, listen. So then I tried it on my new phone, and it won't work on my new phone either. What the, won't work what, the, the what the, what the, what the, what? Let me just see here. I'm going to, I got. Either. Okay, here, there is some, there's a lot of stuff going on here. I, I've been on the phone with Netflix and Samsung, Samsung support, and I have done everything they told me to do. I wiped everything back. I've restarted. I've uninstalled. I've reinstalled. I've cleared the cache. I've cleared the data, all that stuff. I called AT and T, and on their end, my connection looks fine. So everybody is blaming everybody else. Of course, and that's that's the somewhere else. That's and the I don't know what to do with this. That's what we do in technology, because it's because yeah. such an interdependent uh, yeah. thing, right? You know, everybody there is always somebody yeah. else to blame. I'm watching uh, Narcos, the new uh, Netflix uh, original about uh, uh, the Medellin cartel. In Colombia, mm. and uh, mm. I'm watching it right now on Netflix on my Galaxy Note Five. And, really? Uh, yes, and I'm just—I mean, okay. you, if you keep talking, I'll be able to see the whole show. Just <laughs> well, then maybe you can just talk. <laughs> so, so, uh, <laughs> so there's the there's DEA another, agent. There's another, another <laughs> mystery is that I took the tablet back into the AT and T store because I thought it was—you know—I just took it back. And, and let me guess, it worked there fine. Fine. Yeah. So we've narrowed it down to you because <laughs> yeah. it's working for me and it worked in the store. So it's something about your yeah. connection that is a little strange. I can't quite figure it out. Maybe it's your Wi-Fi. Are you using Wi-Fi for it? Obviously you are, right? Yes, I'm using Wi-Fi for it. But when I turn the Wi-Fi off, it works over cellular. Mm, well, now we've narrowed it down. Yeah. In fact, now it ain't the phone and it ain't the tablet. It's your router. It's definitely yeah, but I've tr I've restarted. Can you watch Netflix on your computer using Wi-Fi? Yes, 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 yes. Uh huh. Wow. Yeah, I, I, it works fine on all my Macs. Um, now we we bought a um, booster, a Wi-Fi booster, yeah. a little while back. And could that have something to do with it? Could yeah, I mean, something's a mystery here because we, we've pinpointed that it is not the tablet or the phone because they work fine in other yeah. con in other contexts. Yeah. It is, in fact, it almost it's got to be your internet connection, and it's got to be something going on with the Wi-Fi. Um, I'm not sure uh, what, <laughs> but uh, for some reason, it's dropping uh, Netflix. Who's your Who's your internet service provider? Uh, AT&T. Oh, well, at least you got it from the same people. <laughs> yeah, I know. We, you have U-verse. We're, we're kind of stuck where we are. You have U-verse. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Could be a U-verse problem. I would certainly... F now, the router that you're using, the Wi-Fi router, is that from AT&T or did you buy your own? Yeah, it's from AT&T. Well, here's the good news. No more buck passing. It's AT&T's fault. Right. First right. thing, I would take out that booster... Just take it off okay. and go stand okay. next to the U-verse router and see okay. if it works. If it doesn't, if the same thing's happening, it's AT&T, and it's something they've done with the router. And I hate to say it, but remember, AT&T is in the television business, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. They would rather you uh, watch their expensive premium channels than you use these $7.99 <laughs> streaming video services. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not saying, but I'm just saying...
Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. Why, why won't that work? I'm looking here. I'm looking on, you know, I've been watching this whole time. I've been watching Narcos while talking to you. Fascinating show. Um, but it's not crashing on me. So, yeah, well, I, yeah, I went on to some chat or um, on some forums and I saw a whole lot of people with Netflix and Samsung problems. No, it's not they were Samsung. These really complicated. No, we know it's not Samsung. Yeah, no, because <clears throat> it works fine I, on on your on your cellular connection. It works yeah. fine at the AT and T yeah. store. It is yeah. your router. Do you? Okay. There may be security settings on there. It may be the router for some reason is is knocking it off. Um, it, it and it may be a weird interaction because what's happening is it's crashing the software. You know, it's yeah, not instead it's of instead Netflix. of. Yeah. I mean, did you, I presume by now you've uninstalled and reinstalled the software. Oh, a hundred times. A hundred times. Yeah, no, I think it's AT&T and I think you, they need to, they need to fix this because you can tell them, look, it works <laughs> on the cellular. It works at your store. Yeah. The only place it's not working on the phone and it's not working on the tablet. Does it, does, and it is working on your computer, you said? By yes. Wi-Fi? Mm hmm That's really weird. You know what? I am going to have to... Have you streamed video from other sites like YouTube? Does that work? Well, YouTube works fine. Yeah. Streams everything I, else. we got to take a break. I have to think about this. Hang on for a second. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. We have a solution from England. <laughs> they do. Uh, but it'll tell you there's somebody else is watching Netflix from another another tv it won't let you uh so i pres somebody's saying uh you, you know you're not running netflix somewhere else too are you because there is a limit to no. number but you're not no no mm -mm. um boy this is a very interesting really interesting question so uh oh we got the brain trust working working on this one i love it uh and what we've seemed to have come up with is 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 for some reason, Netflix is not liking on the on the on the Galaxy Note tab and the Galaxy Note Five. The Netflix app, the Android Netflix app, is not liking the data it's getting from her AT and T UVerse router, and it it's not liking it to the point that it actually crashes the program, which is that's really not liking it. That's that's not just a ew. That's a ah, I'm getting out of here. And I'm thinking, and, and this is what uh, Dreamscapes in the chat room thinks too, and maybe this is a good idea. It's a question of changing, believe it or not, the DNS settings in our AT&T router. Uh, that's a complicated thing to do. If you're a geek, you just you use your browser on your desktop computer. You browse to the router. You go to the DNS settings. And I recommend using the settings that come from open DNS, but you can also use Google has some public IP, public DNS servers. Verizon has public DNS servers. There are lots of them out there. If you really want to get geeky, there's actually, my friend Steve Gibson makes a DNS server benchmark that you could run and find the one that's fastest in your neighborhood. I feel like this might fix the problem, but it's just, it's just a, it's a challenge. It really is a challenge, and I and uh, difficult to fix over the radio. But we have narrowed. She did the right thing. She and this is the the key to troubleshooting, is narrow it down, eliminate possibilities. She took the tablet to the AT and T store. Netflix worked fine. She put the tablet or the phone on uh, the LTE network, the cell network, not the Wi Fi network. It worked fine. That's a light bulb goes on at that point, right? It must be my internet access. It's coming through AT and T, so and that's the thing that you need to fix. It's some sort of weird, un, unpredictable interaction between the router and Netflix. That's that's strange. That's strange. Uh, we'll keep looking for answers. And by the way, if you've got a good suggestion, you can also do that on the webpage techguylabs.com. Post in the comments there. Um, what do you think? How could she fix this? Next call, Louis. Or Lewis in Dayton, Ohio. Hi, Lewis. Hi, uh, t um, Leo. Hey, Leo, I've, I've got a problem. I have a seven-year-old uh, laptop. It's a gateway. It's going belly up. Okay. And I use it for I use it for my um, Chase uh, Internet. Uh, Just that's all you do with it is bank with it. Right, and um, want to replace it. So I had a smart idea that uh, I would go with. Um, uh, hot swappable 
uh, rack that I was going to put in a PC uh, that I built and um, started getting an error message on my recycle bin. So um, I thought, well, maybe I'll just go with a new laptop. <laughs> yeah, I saw that, uh, <laughs> so, well, the uh, what's so the, you? Re I'm trying to understand this. You replaced the hard drive in the laptop, and now you're getting error messages. Well, uh, it's a hot swap, so I have I I bought another SSD and uh, put the new SSD in the hot swappable. Yeah, um, that's still that's replacing the hard drive, right? Right, and mm -hmm. uh, installed a new. Of course, I have other hard drives in the uh, desktop. And the the recycle bin that's getting corrupt is a Rad Zero configuration. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, here can I make just a simple two hundred dollars suggestion? Just go out and get a cheap Chromebook. And Chromebook, okay. Yeah, because it's all you're doing is banking. On um, yeah, uh, dedicated so that yeah, you want to so, yeah, I understand what you're doing, which is brilliant. Have a dedicated computer that is never used for anything else, so there's no malware on it, and you just do banking on it. A lot of people would say use Linux. Chromebook, perfect solution. They're cheap. They are, in fact, running Linux with the Chrome OS on top of it. it the only capability it has is the browser, the Chrome browser. That's perfect for banking. It's all you need. It can be. It's cheap enough that you could dedicate it to banking, and it's highly secure. I have never heard of a problem of any exploit of any kind on a Chrome book those things are rock solid and you're gonna love this it's got this feature called power wash should you ever get concerned oh my gosh maybe this isn't right you power wash it goes right back to the beginning every change has been modified is eliminated and you're good to go again you're secure this becomes your dedicated banking computer i think this is the the easiest way to do this uh and you replace you could actually get rid of the laptop now Sarah, Los Angeles, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Sarah. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. How are you? Sorry to hi, keep you Sarah. waiting. Yeah, it's a long time. It's I like know. I know. It stinks. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. We're having a problem with some Bitcoin. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you send me an email? Yes. Ah, oh, I've been meaning to answer that. Okay, well, now I'll answer it on the air, which is even better. Cool. Because I like to do my answers so everybody can hear them. Yay, let's do that, because this has been frustrating me for weeks. I have been reading as much as I can, watching demos online, and whatever I can find, it just seems like a huge mystery. That's yet to be <laughs> All uncovered. right, I'll explain it. I think I can explain it. It's not easy, but I think I can explain it. So Bitcoin okay. is an alternate currency. Right, it's a different right. kind of money, right? Uh, and it's a—I mean, it's very different. But if the person you're doing business with accepts it, there's no reason why you can't use it as money. In fact, if you think about it, if you've got a dollar bill, there's no intrinsic value in a dollar bill. It's a piece of paper. All, almost all money is what we call fiat currency. The value of it is based on faith. Now, it's a little different when it's bank backed by the U.S. government. Bitcoin's not backed by anybody. It's not a governmental currency. It's a what we call a cryptocurrency. And the reason it's called a cryptocurrency is because it's all done with math, which is a little strange. The guy who set it up is a mystery man. And it may be many people, maybe a group, not just one person, named Satoshi Nakamoto. We don't know if he's Japanese, if it's a pseudonym, if it's a group. We don't know. No one knows. But he was a. But one thing we know for sure: whoever set this up was a brilliant mathematician, and I think brilliant currency theorist. He understood money, and the way it's set up is very clever. When you use Bitcoin. You, you will download some soft software called a Bitcoin wallet. And they have Bitcoin wallets for every computer. I take it you've already done that. Yeah, well, it was extremely hard to find a Bitcoin wallet that was... Well, you have um, to trust it, right? You ha there's so many, and everyone tells you that they're not secure. All I mean, right. on, on, the, on the very application or whatever it is before you even download it they're going to tell you it's not secure well they, because um, they don't want to be responsible if you lose money and that's one problem with bitcoin if somebody steals your money 
There's no recourse. You've lost it. It's gone. Yeah, and also, too, whatever device you have your Bitcoin wallet on, say it's on your phone, and you have money in your Bitcoin wallet that's on your phone, you lose your phone, you just lost your whole wallet. Not true, money with it. because you are a good, smart computer user who backs up. You can back up your wallet. Well, that's good to know. So hang on, because I want to talk more about this. I love this subject, but we do have to take a break. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Did you see at the beginning of the show? It was so weird. My my ring doorbell went off. Dong, dong, dong. And I answered it, and it was our neighbor, Bob. And I had a conversation with him. Did you see that? Wild. I love our ring video doorbell. I got to show you. I have it here somewhere. Well, not the one I have installed. This replaces your doorbell, even if you don't have a wired doorbell. If you have a battery-powered doorbell, this will work, too. But we had a wired one, so I took the old one off, two wires sticking out of the wall. They give you everything you need, the drill bits, the screwdriver. There's even a level in here, so you can make it, install it, you know, level and all that. And then you get the doorbell in here. And so this replaces that button on the front of your door. But it's a lot more than the button on your front of your door. First of all... Uh, and, and by the way, if you have chimes in the house, rings those chimes just as normal. But it also connects to your Wi-Fi. It has a microphone, a speaker, and a camera in it. And now when anybody walks up to your door and rings your doorbell, wherever you are, your phone, your laptop, whatever, will ring. That's how I did it. It went ding, ding, ding. I said, oh, there's somebody at the door. Let me answer it. And I could talk to him. It also has a motion detector. Detector. So if somebody comes to your door to look around, you can see. In fact, if I show you my uh, Ring app, let me pull this up here. If I show you my Ring app, you'll see here's the accepted call I had. But here was motion at my front door. So let's see if neighbor Bob was snooping around. Oh, before he rang the doorbell, he's kind of taking a look at the house, huh? He's kind of seeing, he's checking the place out. So this is great because, first of all, burglars almost always, it, daytime burglars, it's 95% of all burglaries. They almost always, almost always will ring the doorbell first just to make sure you're not home. You're not home, but they don't have to know that. Bob didn't know. I could say, hey, I'm watching the kids. What can I do for you? And they'll go away. Let's see who else is at my doorbell. Oh, yeah, there's, there's uh, Michael and his dad. His dad's dropping off Michael. You can hear the audio. This is so cool. So for security, uh, for convenience, your doorbell will ring wherever you are. I love Ring. Now, we've got a deal for you, $10 off if you go to ring.com slash tech guy. You can install it yourself in a half an hour. I am not a handyman. It was easy for me to install. It is. There's also a battery in here, lithium-ion battery that will last a year. So it has a USB port. So you can charge it up and just glue it on the wall, and it'll still work. You can put, it on any, you can put a doorbell on your bedroom door. And it would ring your. <laughs> you can have multiple. You can have multiple uh, doorbells in your app. So actually, that's a good idea. I'm gonna put this on our bedroom door. Ring. <laughs> I love these things. Ring.com. This is the. This is like so cool. It works so well. Uh, Richard Branson, Virgin, uh, just uh, put 28 million dollars into Ring. A lead, led an investment of 28 million dollars. You know how he found out about it? Somebody was visiting him in his Necker Island retreat, and their phone goes dong, dong, dong. And Branson says, "What's that?" And he says, "Oh, it's my doorbell. It's ringing." And he talks to the guy, and Branson goes, "What? What? <laughs> I want to know more about this company." And ends up investing in it. Is that is a great story? Ring.com/slash/techguy, ten bucks off for Tech Guy viewers. You gotta have this thing. It is awesome. Well, I know the show's almost over, but the best part's yet to come. Dick D. Bartolo, our Gizwiz, coming up in a moment. I'm talking right now with Sarah about Bitcoin. So, so Bitcoin you store is digital currency. There's no paper. There's no coins. It's stored in a wallet, a piece of software. You will, with the wallet, create a unique identifier that's just yours, yours alone. If you, you can use that number, that identifier as a long number, or you can get a QR code, you know, one of those barcodes generated. You could put that on a web page 
and people could scan it with their phones, send you Bitcoin. You can send other Bitcoin to Bitcoin to other people if you know their Bitcoin identifier. You can even create many identifiers, and it all ends up in your wallet. Now, the main thing to understand is that wallet is the only place that money exists, so you got to back it up. But you can. It's easy to back it up. In fact, if you use Carbonite or some other backup solution, just make sure you back up your Bitcoin wallet. And then you can install it on another computer. You can have it running on multiple computers. If you want to get the value out of it, like if you want to, that means you want to convert it into some other currency, like dollars. You need to find a Bitcoin exchange that will buy your Bitcoins from you. The amount of money they'll pay swings wildly. At one point, it was over $1,000 per Bitcoin. It's a little bit less now, a few hundred bucks. But, uh, and that's one risk with Bitcoin. If you ever want to convert it into uh, a national currency like the U.S. dollar, you're, you don't know what it's going to convert at. Uh, that's unpredictable. It's like buying stock in the stock market. You don't know what it's going to end up at. So the key thing to understand is you create a Bitcoin wallet. You store your Bitcoin in the wallet. You say, how do I get some Bitcoin? You have to have somebody give it to you, just like your dollars. How do I get dollars? You work for it. Uh, you have to get somebody to either give it to you. You have to earn it. You can now, sometimes people are confused by this. It is possible to generate Bitcoins. They call it Bitcoin mining. But the people who set this up were so smart. They said, as there's more Bitcoins in circulation, it's going to be harder and harder to mine it. And so at this point, it's so difficult to mine it successfully. You need to have dedicated, specialized computers, a lot of horsepower, and even then, it's just chance whether you're going to make any any coins. I don't recommend it. If you'd gotten in early, perhaps, but at this point, Bitcoin mining is a specialization. You can search it on the internet that requires so much money, and that's the plan. They didn't want anybody to make a lot of money on this. So it costs very close to the same amount of money in energy and hardware as you're gonna, as you could conceivably reap from Bitcoin, it's not a viable way to make money. Best think of it as currency, just like dollars, that you can exchange with somebody as long as they understand what it is. What's Bitcoin? If they don't know, there's no point. Uh, there's lots to do to read about Bitcoin. I wouldn't go crazy about investing in Bitcoin. It's a pretty speculative thing. But there, in a nutshell, is uh, is the story of Bitcoin. It's fascinating. It's not the only one. I mean, it's like Disney bucks. It's like <laughs> Canadian tire money. It's a new, a made-up currency that's not backed up by a government, but in fact can be used to pay people if you can find people that'll accept it. There's a cupcake company in San Francisco that'll take Bitcoin. Uh, there are, in some places, not in the U.S., but in some countries, Bitcoin ATMs. You could feed money into it and get Bitcoin out. It's not a physical coin. It's a digital thing. But if you think about it, most of our money nowadays is digital, right? Are there actually dollar bills in that bank representing your savings and checking? No. It's all, it's all a number. It's all on a computer somewhere. Dickie D, Dick D. Bartolo, Mad Magazine's maddest writer. We call him the yes. Gizwiz. Hi, Dickie D. And owner, owner of a two Bitcoin. You have two Bitcoins? Yeah. I have 25 cents in my pocket. <laughs> No, 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 that's that's two bits. Very big difference. <laughs> oh, it is? Oh. oh For that, you can get a shave shaved. and a haircut. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I have seven Bitcoins. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. Wow. For At one point, they were worth quite a bit of money. But the thing is, it's a little shady, like Mt. Gox, the place that you used to go to get your Bitcoins. Uh, that guy got arrested for chicanery. No, I think I'm just going to keep it in regular money. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> makes me a little nervous. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's see. And what do you do, what, what do you do with those twit dollars that Frederick sends uh, every month for salary? That's um, another thing. Anything I, you want, Dick. Oh, okay. <laughs> if, okay. If you can find somebody, you'll take them. Excellent. There's Coinbase. Excellent. This is probably, uh, right now they're giving you $232.88. So I have about $1,500 worth of Bitcoin. Wow. Yeah. Anyway. What, can, what do you got for us okay. this week? Okay, uh, some uh, from the outdoor product show in Salt Lake City last month, uh, Night Eyes. Do you know the company Night Eyes? 
Boy, that sounds familiar. Uh, yes, is, is, uh, I'm thinking it's an LED ago, company or something. Yes, exactly. And, and years ago, we both had uh, Night Eyes oh. uh, Inca pens. Yes, you didn't yes. you have Gizwiz pens and a Gizwiz yes. hat and stuff with the yes, Night Eyes in there? Yeah. It, yes, exactly. Because you exactly. were afraid of the dark and you you didn't want to want. Yeah, I remember that. Well, well Panther Vision was the hat. But oh, the Panther Vision, right, right, right. Right, and Night Eyes was the pens. Anyway, uh, Night Eyes introduced. Actually, I gave you one at the meetup, but there were so many people there, you it probably didn't. Even I have both. You gave me two, and I have oh, them okay. both. Okay, yeah, they they introduced that uh, at the outdoor product show, and it's called Power Key Minis, and they're mini tiny little uh, charging cables. They make uh, an Apple version, and they make the micro USB for most of the Android phones. And they, they make millions of things that hang on keychains. So both of these <laughs> can hang on a keychain. I have one they, I have one right now on my keychain. Because it's, it's nice, to, you know, that you never know when you're going to need a charger cord. Exactly, exactly. Uh, now that's not on Amazon yet. So when they get on Amazon, they usually are discounted. Something that is on Amazon and, and is being discounted is a different version of the Inca pen. It's called the Inca mobile pen. And what's neat about that is one end is a pen and they're space pens. They can write upside down in freezing weather underwater. But the other end is a stylus. So you oh. can use it for your tablet or your smartphone. I need a replacement because my Gizwiz pen fell apart. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> these are carbon fiber. Ah, oh. uh, yeah. They. It's they, really handy to have a pen. Believe it or not, on your keychain, you just never you know. know what? You Sometimes I'm sitting on a bus or a train, and I say, "Oh, this would be great for mad," and I go, well, "I don't have a." Not since the, my Inca pen lasted three and a half years before I put a refill in it. Now we're gonna have uh, to get you to get a pad because you really—it's not okay to keep writing on the back of the bus seat. Yeah, I know because I tried to find that bus again. <laughs> I, kept saying, I had a great what idea. What bus what was, was that? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, so anyway, Incapen list is twelve dollars, but on Amazon, a couple of people are already selling for seven bucks. So the get the discounted one if you can find, mold, find it for all exactly. of this Incas, uh, or Night Eye stuff. Yeah, because tw it's twenty five bucks for the Lightning cable. That's because Apple takes their tax. Exactly, and only fourteen ninety nine yeah. for the Android version, and that's the suggested retail. Yeah. So yeah. ten bucks goes to Apple, I would guess. On yeah, this. yeah, something. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. If, nice work if you can get it. Dick D. Bartolo's at gizwiz.biz. That's his website where you can see uh, this product and all the gadgets he mentions on not only on this show, but ABC's World News Now and all the shows he appears on. You just I know you just did a World News Now bit. Uh, yeah, you can yeah, also play the What the Heck Is It contest, a chance to win an autographed Mad Magazine by identifying this mysterious object. I think it's a thumb sharpener, but I could be wrong. Oh, hmm. that's a good guess. Painful, <laughs> but a very good guess. And if you want to watch the Gizwiz podcast, it is the greatest show on earth. Just go to gizwiz.tv. And we'll talk again next week, Dickie D. Yes, sir. And as for all of you, well, I'm sorry to say it is time for me to run. Thank you uh, very much, Kim Schaffer, for answering the phones. J uh, Nathan Staten, our musical director. Uh, TechGuyLabs.com is the website. Thanks to you. I'll see you next time. Leo Laporte, the Tech Guy. Well, that's it for the Tech Guy Show for today. Thank you so much for being here. And don't forget, it's just the tip of the iceberg. We do nearly 30 shows on the Netcast Network. It's called TWIT, T-W-I-T. It stands for This Week in Tech, and you'll find it at twit.tv, including the podcasts for this show. We talk about Windows on Windows Weekly, Macintosh on Mac Break Weekly, iPads, iPhones, Apple Watches on iOS Today, Security and Security Now. I mean, I can go on and on. And on. You even get your daily dose of tech news with Tech News Today and Tech News Tonight. And of course, the big show every Sunday afternoon this week in tech. You'll find it all at twit.tv. And I'll be back next week with another great Tech Guys show. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.